And welcome to the 72 Pin Connector Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. With us this week, we have Eric. What's up? Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. And we have Tom. Good who's, evening. Who seemed to have moved. His desk is not yes. normally facing this particular location. It's a very familiar location. Uh, oh, yeah. How did you get there? Well, I, I decided to um, reinstall some old classic games, and my computer freaked out. There's a bunch of electricity, and then I ended up here. Um, oh. So far, I'm okay, because there's, yeah. there's like a bunch of mid-90s like alt-rock stuff going on, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm vibing. Uh, for the audio yeah. listeners, he's got a little green screen thing going on. We've got the, the Windows XP default desktop background. It's looking good. Yeah, I think everyone is familiar with that background. It, yeah. it basically has to be. It definitely brings up some some feelings, some nostalgia and memories and waiting for Remember somebody to get off the time. waiting for somebody to get off the phone so I could get on the internet. Remember when you installed games on your PC and then to access them you had icons on your desktop? Like I had a little <laughs> a little box for first person shooters and then I had like my RTSs over here and then right in the middle was World of Warcraft because that's the only game I would play. Yeah. So I still use desktop icons for uh, Epic Games because I don't use that launcher much. Okay. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> and I am absolutely toggling my um, text because of dogs. But no, <laughs> Dobby calling out RTS has died with XP. Bullshit. Yeah, they did. They did. I'm, I'm going to say it happened. Vista was out and they were still making good ones. Age of Empires 3, I believe, was out when or came out after Vista launched. And Planetary Annihilation. Anyone? I mean, you know, I, I didn't the mind promise it. of Planetary, but it was fine. Like it just there wasn't enough to keep me there. And the one of the biggest issues with that game is for an RTS, you usually rely on um on the like AI opponents so you can get used to it, figure out your strategy, you know, what units are you producing first, what kind of upgrades are you getting right away. And the default AI setting in that, without any option to change, was just impossible to defeat. Like it was no, there were there were options. Yeah. There were options later, but when you first got the game, like right off of the Kickstarter, there was nothing. It was just here's the computer opponents, they're going to kick your ass unless you're perfect. Oh, because it was still early access when it came off the Kickstarter, if I remember right. right. But um, yeah, so I was a big fan of their original game, Total Annihilation, and it fell flat for me compared compared to. But a yeah. lot of the systems that they talked about, dude, those systems were fucking cool. Those yeah, were yeah really the, the cool whole system. rotating planet thing was was really neat. Um, and I think like Having, their map system and stuff was implemented pretty well. It's been a long time since I've played it having the idea of multiple battles going on and not air versus water versus ground, but yeah. literally you had layers. In, inner atmosphere, outer atmosphere wars. Yeah. yeah. You had layers. This is, it was a lot to keep track of. Um, but I loved it. And I kind of liked the, uh, there was like a, uh, what was it? There's like three points that you capture on the map and then it's like an insta win kind of thing. Like you literally just blow up the planet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if or their section of the yeah. planet, you would be able to do that with moons. Uh -huh. You yeah. would, um, you would be able to put jets on a moon, and unless your opponent was able to get on and destroy one of those while en route, you lost. But those were super hard to make. You had to be yeah. sneaky as fuck. Mm -hmm. But hey, once Otherwise, you see that moon coming down, like there's, there's nothing they can do. All of a sudden, that's no moon. That's a yeah. weapon. <laughs> Boost over ball. But no. Um, <laughs> damn it, there's another RTS I was going to call. Oh, yeah. It's just for non-assholery. If you are interested in modern day first per, or, uh, RTSs, uh, They Are Billions is a really, really solid title. Oh, I forgot it is about brutally that. difficult. Brutally difficult. I never played but it, but I remember it game. being a, a kind of popular there for a minute. 
kind of like survival horror-ish RTS. So yeah, it, it's really, really fucking solid. But yeah, how'd you guys been this week? We kind of got right into some nitty gritty there for a second. <laughs> uh, that's fine. That's usually the opposite of what we do. So it's, it's a nice little change of pace. Just talking yeah. about video games right away. Yeah. yeah who the fuck does that? Uh, the week's been oh, fun, yeah. I guess. Not not a lot has happened. Okay, so guys, I've been eating a lot of Jack in the Box recently, and I gotta say, they're not bad. Like they're not good. There's nothing yeah. great about Jack in the Box. Like they do, they do a bunch of weird shit. Like they've got your standard sandwiches, your chicken tenders. They do tacos. Like they they do a bunch of weird shit all day breakfast, and they're Spring not spring rolls. Great at yeah, they're not great at anything, but goddamn, if you want like two tacos, a burger, a chicken sandwich, some curly fries, yeah, that's that's the place. That's also a really fucking big order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I am a really big man. <laughs> like anytime I would ever think about Jackbox, there's like five better stops on the way. Yeah, that's true. Like I've I ate there for... once. For food quality, McDonald's is definitely better. McDonald's is borderline gourmet compared to Jack in the Box. <laughs> yeah, but they're not terrible. They're really not. They should be a whole lot worse than they are. I'll put it that way. I'm not afraid of getting sick when I eat there. <laughs> that's a plus. That's, that's, a, yeah, that's the best thing you can say about a, that. That's a step above some sketchy restaurants around here. <laughs> I mean, let that be no statement of quality, but I'm not too worried about food poisoning. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I think just once. Because I saw that they had spring rolls and I was instantly like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, it's, what kind it's of burger joint that spring rolls? It's definitely weird. I went to one, the only time I've been to one, it was for breakfast. So that I didn't have any the of the... I mean, it was, it, was, it was all right. I am a firm believer that if you fuck up breakfast, I never want to eat at your place. <laughs> Agreed. Like, that is one of the easiest meals to get right. You don't have to make it awesome, but a solid breakfast is hard to fuck up. Well, and you have to understand, if you're in the restaurant business, you got to accept that you're not going to do better than the McGriddle. Like, aim a couple steps lower because you can't improve on perfection. Oh, man. McDonald's. The, yeah, I'm... Yeah, I the love McGriddle. It wasn't Ch even the their chicken bread. McGriddle though. Oh, oh, holy! What a great McGriddles idea. weren't even their best breakfast sandwiches. Fight me. <laughs> it's Are okay you the to McMuffin guy, or do you did you like the steak and was the it the steak bagel. and egg bagel? Everyone, everyone reminisces on the steak end of it. They forget that there was a fucking sausage version that was fucking on point. Sausage bagel, yeah. The I steak one was super greasy. Yeah, much or that. I like the sauce the they had on it. The sauce they had yeah, on it was good sauce, though. Yeah, that sauce. That sauce was great. I have no fucking clue what it was. It wasn't even like marketed as being on there. Like if you yeah. looked up on the menu, yeah. what was there? There was no reference to this sauce. <laughs> it was there though. That's like the sauce. sauce. It was there. Um, and it wasn't gravy. Eric, did you before. ever have the it's fucking gravy? <laughs> We've brought it up a couple times. Did you ever try the breakfast baconator? Uh, yes, I was like underwhelmed, but oh. I was also underwhelmed with the Baconator. Oh, yeah, really? I don't, I I don't ever get Baconators. That's the I, only sandwich I get from Wendy's. Like the spicy chicken. Dude, the, points, but... no, the Asiago Bacon Club thing. Oh, that one's good, too. With the spicy patty? Yeah. yeah. You gotta go spicy, too. That's, yeah, I, that's one of my go-tos for sure there. I find the bacon made like bacon is a very strong flavor and yeah. it's put on way too much shit. Yeah. I would much rather have a sausage sandwich than bacon or steak. Because if you're getting a steak breakfast sandwich, it's going to be like the poorest excuse for a steak. And then the bacon, you're right. It just overrides everything. It's just bacon at that point with some stuff around it. Sausage sage blends with stuff. Yeah. The saginess of a nice sausage, a little bit of grease on it, it has some yeah. dense to density to it unlike bacon just kind of crisps away yeah it's got a good mouth feel 
I love bacon. I really do. I just don't think it works well in combinations. Bacon is yeah, best when it's, it's alone and you're able to have just bacon. It's like steak. Yeah, for, for the most part. Vidabi calls out, yeah, but what about the Taco Bell wrap with gravy in it? Oh, that that's Solid. fucking... Yeah. <laughs> Taco Bell is... Well, I think I've said this on the cast. Taco Bell is my favorite fast food breakfast. Absolutely, yeah, Barton. Yeah, we definitely had that talk. My comrade buddy says, am I the only one that never really wants to know what's in the McDonald's sauces? <laughs> uh, you she's, not, she's not wrong. <laughs> I'm one of the people that I don't get affected no. too much by yeah, what's in my food. Yeah, that's true. I'm just, I'm I don't care way. about most of sauces. I just want to know what the fuck was on that bagel. <laughs> like, oh, it's so um, it's a uh, liquefied cow's eyes. Okay, that's fine. Apparently liquefied yeah. cow's eyes are delicious. Exactly. Spread that shit thought. everywhere. <laughs> awesome. You had cow's eyes what on a, toast. What, <laughs> what a fucking pull. Liquefied cow eyes. <laughs> it, it, was the, <laughs> it was just the nastiest thing I could think of off the top of my head at the very moment, you know. Well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> Moo. Over Worcestershire sauce. No. Boo. <laughs> that was awful, Tom. Jesus. <laughs> You're welcome. How how far? Uh, Eleven I mean, minutes and forty five seconds into the cast, and I'm already mad at time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> New record. I'm, I'm working to drive that number down. I'm sorry it took an eleven whole minutes this time, guys. Okay. I'll work harder. So there's two camps on this, um, and I found out that a lot of the people I talk to are in a different camp than me. I made some beef stew yesterday. Um, a lot of people, or there's two different ways, really. There is the you brown the entire roast. And then you cook it whole, or you cut it up into cubes, brown it, and cook it. Do you got which way do you guys prefer? Just shredded ass beef or chunks of beef? No, shredded ass beef. Um, Man, shredded when ass I, beef. Well, when I make when I make beef stew, I go all out. I go into my car and I drive to the grocery store, and then I buy a can of Dinty Moore beef stew. <laughs> oh shit. And so you're I, a chunk boy. And then I eat it, you know, with a spoon or whatever. I take hey, pride I, in my stews. I like Campbell's um damn it, what are they? What's theirs? The Campbell's brand? Campbell's chunky. The chunky. Chunky. Yeah. They're ch the chunky beef stews pretty chunky fucking good. good. Yeah, it is. But no, I like chunks of beef. I don't like the shreds. Like I cut it up into cubes and brown that shit. Yeah, I think I'd prefer I mean, chunks. Either way. Like, I will eat beef stew either way. There's yeah. definitely something different about a stew with shredded beef, though, because it it's more of a, dare I say, meat pudding, right? It's like, <laughs> it's sort of semi-solid at that point, right? But if you've got chunks of beef that's like nice cubes, it's more soupy, yeah. if that makes sense. So I think it depends on what you want, like the, the texture you're going for. And I am going to have to try what Scott was telling me about. He was saying about putting some tomato paste and shit in that. Could be good. I really need to try that. Mine's very soupy, very broth heavy. But so, I also um, do a set it and forget it where I throw everything in in the morning because I'm out and about doing shit through the day. Instead of doing the beef first, then potatoes, then your carrots and yeah, celery kind of thing. Throw it all in. Ten hours in the crock pot or three hours in a pressure cooker and you're done. Yeah, I went to taste the broth right when I checked the meat to make sure the meat was at temp. And then I'm like, okay, I want to make sure this broth's coming out good. Like a dumbass, put it straight into my mouth, burn <laughs> the shit out of my tongue. Guess who didn't taste beef stew very much last night? Oh, that's, so that's why you said it tasted better this morning. Oh. <laughs> no, no, okay. Second question about beef or most stews. It's possibly the next only day. food I know of that tastes better the next day. Um, um, honestly, sometimes to me, I told you this earlier, Eric, but crab rangoon straight out of the fridge the next morning, not even heated up. It's oh not bad. Oh my god, I it's like it better really than fresh. Bad. I like it better than when it's hot. I like hot better, but honestly, it's not terrible. I expected it to be bad. Does it go well with sweet and sour sauce the next morning, or is it yeah. a different type of thing? Either or. I usually don't dip it in the sweet and sour sauce the next morning. But you can. It's good, too. Comrade Bunny calling out leftover Kraft macaroni and cheese better than fresh. I'm going to disagree hard on that one. I've never had leftover mac and cheese. <laughs> 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 I 
That a boy. <laughs> you're living life to the fullest. <laughs> No, so growing up, my uh, grandma would always do when we had leftover mac and cheese, put it into a cake pan, put a little milk, a little more cheese on top, and then put breadcrumbs over that shit and throw it in the oven. That was legit. Super good. Super good. So, you guys, I do guys you're say- silent on me, so you're making me fill some space here. <laughs> Sorry. Cold pizza. I was lost in thought. I was lost in the sauce. Cold pizza, definitely a bit better than uh, than fresh pizza. Yes. Most of the time. Yes. Like, unless I, we're talking deep dish, I which disagree. I think is only good hot. Dude, I'll get a spicy sausage jalapeno pizza. That cold is awesome. Oh, Anything spicy so that's temperature cold, I enjoy. It's such a, cu- a cool... Uh, yeah, uh, cool. Yeah. It's a cool contrast. So um, if you want to spice things up a little bit, spice up your life. Guys, I had a jalapeno beer the other day. Ooh. It was a legit spicy beer. Was it good? It was. I don't cold, like them. It was bubbly and it was delicious. That's I've never had jalapeno. <laughs> I've had a habanero one from Sculpin Point. I think it's what they're called. Ballast Point, maybe. Ballast Point. I it, loved it. It was, it was fucking odd. Uh. I don't know, man. Like, I like cold spice. I don't know if I like drinking peppers. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really weird, though, because, like, usually, like, when you're eating spicy wings, you get kind of the the burning sort of, like, in places you expect, but you're drinking a beer, and, like, halfway down your throat starts the fire, and you're just like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> he did. Like, it's are- not like a chicken wing where, like, it's on your mouth, and, like, you've got a nice era of spicy around your aura of spice around you no the beer just like starts in the center and moves outwards hmm. it's good oh. i enjoyed it on the beer front so after our conversation last podcast um went to kroger and staring right down at us is a sampler pack of pumpkin beers so um go. yep pick that up so i had four different pumpkin, pumpkin brews Elysian Night Owl is the might be one of my favorites. Like that shit is awesome. Elysian in general is just a great brewery. They do good work. Yeah. The, they're the, being out here and having to rediscover breweries, I'm really gravitating towards them a lot. Mm-hmm. Their uh their split shot coffee stout is incredible. Holy I shit. I found it okay. I like that one. They have a uh coffee pumpkin stout. I can't that's uh pumpkin. pretty good. I know we talk about this every yeah, year. Tis just... the season for pumpkin. I had some. Yeah. Uh, I had like a pumpkin and swirl October and fest. Dunkin' Donuts coffee the other day. So, li- like under pumpkin not, pumpkin it's season. Not offensive to me, but yeah. it's just not that good. Okay, so we've we've hit the pumpkin thing to death. What about Oktoberfest beers? Do you guys like like good old to me a good old standby Sam Adams Oktoberfest? Pretty fucking good beer. Ah, uh, yeah. That was Take the first time I enjoyed a beer. Was that? That's an odd first enjoyable beer. I don't know. Most of the time it's something more like Blue Moon. I yeah, I don't know. Because that's a pretty beery beer. I mean, it's got really good like spices and stuff to it. But I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's a pretty fucking beery beer. I guess so. I don't know. Might have just been yeah, the like- time and place, but. I remember enjoying it sitting on the porch. It was just a little chilly out, but not too chilly to relax. Oh, yeah. Nice. You're describing a perfect day. <laughs> Dude, I miss Ohio Falls. <laughs> yeah. I miss Ohio Falls, man. You walk outside, you smell some burning leaves and maybe somebody cooking hot dogs on the grill. Dude, it's just perfect. It's like fucking 40 degrees, dry, sunny. It's Just it, have a hoodie on Did you say enjoy. 40 degrees? That's yeah, a little fall. cool for me. Ah, cool for me. That's, that's hoodie cold. weather. It's like cold enough 50. that when you walk outside, you get like good crunch on the ground, but you're not freezing to death. Yeah. It's that, do I need a heavy coat or is my hoodie and a jacket fine? <laughs> Anytime you're asking that question, the weather is good. Yeah. I, I love it. Other than that, I love being out here seasonally, but fall, man, fall's my season. I'm a uh, winter guy. 
any more winter. My favorite yeah. winters were Detroit. <laughs> take take all the snow you want, man. Why? <laughs> I I love I absolutely love winter. And uh in Detroit, Detroit man had some fucking winter. Yeah, you have like lake effect to the max. Yeah. I remember being a kid opening uh the door of our house and the snow drift had piled up enough that it was literally covering the entirety of the door and then just like taking a full on cartoon wily e. coyote run at this wall of snow and uh punching a tiny tom size hole through the front door it was great we've had some pretty nasty drifts at my mom's but it was always between the houses so no doors uh, but we've had to like go up to our roof but yeah it's hmm. yeah indeed indeed yeah. so anything else exciting or uh we just about to go get into some some gamey goodies. Gamey um, goodies. Um, I'm ready to jump I've into the games. Nothing. All right. Oh, fellas, what all games you been on this week? Vaporwave. Uh, <laughs> the video game. Oh yeah. Yeah. Vaporwave Spider Man. Uh, I wish. No. <laughs> um, this is this is uh vaporwave. Point and click first person exploration Metroidvania. Okay. Which uh, sounds a lot. Called... That's some words together. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, like, <laughs> that's a sentence, I guess. Um, so I've been playing Broken Reality. Um, and it's a, like, super far side of indie, indie game. Um, and it is all about vaporwave aesthetic. It's about... Um, the, the broken and forgotten pieces of the internet. Like, the, the main city in the game is called GeoCity. Like, they... Oh, Lord. Yeah, the, the thematic <laughs> elements that they talk about ranges from, like, obsolescence and the old forgotten parts of the internet, vaporwave aesthetic, the soundtrack has got, like, Windows XP startup sounds. If there is a game made for me, this is probably... <laughs> um, it is a, a non-violent first-person adventure exploration game where it's one of those games where you're trying to get to the next part of the level. You know it's there, and the guy's like, I'm not moving unless you give me a diamond. And you're like, well, shit. And then now somebody else is like, hey, diamond. I've got this diamond, but you got to do this thing and get this thing from this other guy first. And you're like, ah, shit. So now you've got like three quests that are all dependent on each other. And you've got to go find that guy a diamond, so he'll let you into the captain's quarters, so you can talk about spaghetti or whatever. <laughs> spaghetti, um, <laughs> yeah, spaghetti. That's it. You're I just, you're for your spaghetti. spaghetti. You're talking about spaghetti. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of interesting because um, the first part of the game has you running around grabbing a toolkit of different stuff that you can use to traverse the environment. It's all non-violent. You're not attacking people. You have a sword that'll defeat pop-ups. You've got a, a, oh, a liker, which is literally a thumbs up. You can just click stuff and like ads. And the game is all about getting likes so you can be popular, so you can get to other areas of this this weird 3D internet. Are you sure you weren't playing uh, Death Stranding? Yeah, I mean, it is. This does feel like a Strand-type game. A lot. Oh, God. Um, not, not this again. <laughs> so so like, I, I, I will say this. You brought up something that I had completely removed from my memory until you said it. Pop-ups. Oh, yeah. yeah I forgot about <laughs> pop-ups. Ad blockers. So, yeah, it's... um, Like, the, the game is interesting. I, I think it was cheap. I think it was, like, 10 bucks, maybe maybe 15 which, honestly, is a little a little pricey for what you're getting. But if all you want to do is vibe out to, like, that the most stereotypical Vaporwave soundtrack you can think of um, and play a first-person adventure exploration game that sometimes is funny and sometimes it's just kind of cringy because it's not good. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fine. So, Fine's uh, good. It's... It's fine. I really love the aesthetic, though. Like, the, the whole game is very much in the, you know, hot pinks, light blues, stuff melting in and out of, like, its own version of broken reality. Ha! ha. Get it, guys? 
Um, but it's it's really something else to look at. Uh, the game is beautiful in this super low poly jank kind of way. Hmm. So yeah, Pro I'll, uh, I'll have to show you guys sometime. It's it's interesting. I definitely but want to see the aesthetic of it because I do. I think the vaporwave thing is kind of cool. I mean, I'm, yeah. I haven't seen a lot of stuff in the style of vaporwave, so I I only have really a vague idea of what vaporwave even is. But um, what I have seen of it looks really interesting. And I and I like when a game just takes a style and just all in. It just goes for it. This is us. Oh yeah, it, broken reality absolutely runs with it. They are. They are deep in the vaporwave lore. So one of the the big things, like one of the first vaporwave creations, was this uh, um, thing called Macintosh Plus Floral Shop. I think it's the the song or a, a song by Macintosh Plus. Um, and in one of the shopping mini games, where you're spending a bunch of money because money doesn't matter, you just go into debt to get likes because that's the only thing you care about. Um, which might be a thematic element on its own. Uh, but the highest rating you can get in the shopping minigame is Floral Shopper, uh, which is interesting. So it leans real hard to its own aesthetic. Nice. nice. Very, very cool. Mm. So I played something a little new that I might end up making a video of and having up on our YouTube as a loss and found. So oh, yeah. Dobby and I were sitting around and Dobby's like, okay, we're going to do this. I'm going to name a game and we're both going to install it and play it. <laughs> so he picked nine parchments, which is actually, it was, it's pretty enjoyable. We got about a third to halfway through a single run. It seems like a game that's designed for multiple runs or something. It does, it's not really roguelike, but there's absolutely a lot of characters. So I don't, or there's got to be some rerunning ability or the game opens up more, but it's a um it's looks very much like it's made by the people from trying i actually had to check to see if it was trying. but um trying yeah it, it looks very much like that but it's a top down isometric twin stick shooter Ooh. where you have different spells that you cycle through and you know there's elemental damages to certain enemies need fire while they're resistance to death some need electric while they're resistant to water that kind of stuff. But um, there was some interesting stuff that they did with it. Um, each spell had its own mana. So you would be able to run one spell all the way to the ground and then switch spells and keep casting. And oh. then switch back to that other spell because it's been recharged. But it's it's a really pretty game. It was really fun. Uh, some of the fights, like... It's easy, easy, easy. You get to an area that's designed to be hard, and then it's brutal. Oh. Then you get through it, and then it's easy, 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 and then it's brutal. And I was getting to it, Scott. Calm down. <laughs> um, so they have a really cool um, co-op, or not even just co-op, just in general. Elemental cast. Like, there's different types of spells. There's bolts, there's beams, and then there's, like, blasts. If you're doing beam magic, you have two different elements. You can combine them to do a joint beam between you and your teammate. But this also goes another way where if your teammate's being attacked by a beam, you can shoot yours into it to redirect the opponents. Cool. Oh. So that, that was kind of, it was a cool little element and it does strengthen it up to make it worthwhile to do. But it's hard as fuck to aim. Because like you're both coming in at this angle, the beam goes that way or something. So you have to kind of direct it. <laughs> But it's a fun little game. Um, nothing crazy, but it was enjoyable. It's always, always fun to some twin stick. Yeah, it's always fun to to dive into those games that nobody's ever heard of, and it's probably not any good. But you're gonna check it out anyway, and then you have a surprisingly nice time with it. That's always that's always really really cool. Yeah, there was there was some fun stuff. They have hidden items that you would think. Um, they give you this blink ability. So you think that, okay, there's hidden items on the maps. They're going to have spots where you have to like blink off the map and to find it. No, we have yet to find a single spot where you have to blink off the map to find a hidden object. Hmm. Anytime huh. it's a spot, you would think this is typically where things are hidden. They're not there. Interesting. So it's really, really watered down when it comes to the hidden elements, I think is the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. But 
either way, it's interesting. If you get a chance to pick it up for cheap, it's good to play with someone. Has this game time. been out for a while, or is it new? Or um, yeah, is it um, new, or has it been around? You know what? I'll tell you that in a few seconds. <laughs> in the meantime, next question, I guess, please. Yeah. I guess I'm just curious. <laughs> I was just curious if it was a game that got any sort of like cult following, or if it did pretty well, or if this is like a a completely like nobody's ever heard of it. You know, lost in the steam sauce kind of game. It was 2017, and this was from the people that did Trine. Oh, it was. Which is why the okay. art style gotcha. is exactly like that. I think Trine. I missed that earlier. You probably said that. Makes I, sense. I, I said it looks similar to. I wasn't sure if it was them, but it is them. Okay. You know, how prepared I am. I don't have to Google that while I'm on the show. So it's not I'm like totally a brand, you know, it's not brand new developers making no. their first or second game. Like they've been around the block a few times. No. And Scott's pointing out 70 or seven out of 10 on Steam. Okay. 92% with Google users. 92%. Eh. I mean, if you know what you're getting into, it's well made. The combat of it's interesting. It's enough to keep you having to pay attention. And um, by default, here, here's the last thing I'll talk about. By default, friendly fire is on. And the only alternatives you get to friendly fire is to make it to where um, reflective damage that you get hurt yourself. Hmm. So it is absolutely brutal in that end i had some point my strongest magic was this death flower yeah i would throw it on the ground someone would step on it, it would send out this huge wave of poison so if you're not paying attention that huge wave of poison will hit you unless you jump over it so i killed scott numerous times on accident because whoop there went a poison explosion teammate dead so gotta, th that part was interesting gotta love the old friendly fire Huh, yeah, Eric. well, especially in a uh, bullet hell. And yes, friendly <laughs> fire, like in Tarkov, everyone's favorite game, the fucking team kill. I don't know. I think that's yeah. Rainbow Six Siege, actually. But Oh, the reflective? That's beside the point. No, just like team killing is something that happens to a lot of people. Oh, I see what you're saying. Times. Yes. Because of the, <laughs> the garbage community. <laughs> yes, like the purposeful team killing. Yeah, that uh, that happened actually to me last night in Pavlov, um, <laughs> which was awful. We were we were playing a game, and we were Russian bomb, and one of our teammates decided to flank the complete opposite direction, like rotate around the map completely and come from behind on these guys that were playing from the bomb. It was a really great idea. Unfortunately, like we had four guys rushing the front and just putting up a wall of bullets at everyone else. And our one teammate was sitting in the back. Now in Pavlov, there is friendly fire. So you're, you're not protected. And when we just started unloading and spraying bullets at the enemy team, our teammate got caught in the crossfire and got his head taken off. Like, it just makes sense, right? <laughs> if you're flanking that hard, you're going to get caught in the crossfire. Yeah, um, true. So the next round, he's pissed. He's like, guys, I told you I was flanking. He buys a shotgun and proceeds to take three of our oh, heads off no. before the last guy puts him down. And then it's a 1v5. It was just fucking awful. But that Vote shit tech. happens all the time in CS and in Pavlov. And it's it's kind of annoying. Like It's obnoxious. Yeah. A decent amount of time, people are going to be chill. Like, ah, oh, shit. Sorry, man. Like, I've been on the other end of that. Like, right. Like, yo, some guy's lining up a shot. He's got an op. He's scoped in. He can't see me. And I take one step to the right. Bang. Just my, my brain's exit my nose. Um, and <laughs> that's totally my fault. I stepped in front of the gun. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Like, the guy's like, oh, fuck. I didn't mean to, man. I'm so sorry. Don't kick me. I'm like, dude, I stepped in I front of the gun. I stepped in front of that's, you. <laughs> that is my fault. I from literally stepped in front of the barrel of a gun. <laughs> It was yeah, it was... Rainbow is probably the one I saw the biggest griefing when it comes to that. Yeah, there are yes. some fucking ass hats out there. Agreed. I mean, the last time I played Rainbow Six, which was quite a while ago, I hadn't played it in forever. I'm like, all right, I'll just jump into a couple of casual games. The first two games, I got team killed. Like literally, the first two games I played, back to back. Why? What is the point? Because people people suck. Yeah, suck. Actually, no. I'm I'm sorry. I I mistook that. 
it was the first game I joined, I got vote kicked for no reason immediately. Oh, neat. And then the second game is the one I got team killed in. I didn't even know there was a vote kick in Rainbow Six. I think they're taking it out for ranked and something else. Or the unranked playlist. I can't remember. But yeah, there's a vote kick. Huh. But yeah. So you was doing some Pavlov this week? Yeah, I uh, I played a little bit of uh, just standard Pavlov game modes and uh, then a little bit of a mode that I try to really stay away from because most of the time it's filled with children. Um, Trouble in Terrorist Town, which is quite literally like a mafia style game mode. Um, it's been around forever. Uh, so you've got a detective who can tell like good people from bad people. And you've got a couple like terrorists or traitors whose job it is to kill all the innocent people. And what involves is a game of backstabbing, misdirection, and uh, like trying to kill somebody behind the bushes without anybody seeing. And then be like, I don't know, man. He pulled a gun out. He was shooting me. I had to put him down. And, and, and you know, the other guys are like, uh-huh, sure. Do we believe him? I don't know. Let's get the detective to figure out if he's innocent or not. And then somehow, which is so weird, the detective's bodyguard just assassinated him. It was it was weird. <laughs> Clearly, that guy's a terrorist. We have to kill him. And the whole time, like I'm sitting in the background trying to like pull the invisible political strings to get people to turn on each other. And it's <laughs> it's a lot of fun when you get a bunch of adults in a room and you're all trying to backstab each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then the ten year olds join, and you have to find a new server. So uh, the old werewolf. I remember um, there was an old text based game called Star Kingdoms. I used to play a shit ton of. And one of the uh, secondary games that would happen in the forums of there was always Werewolf. Yeah. That's uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. There's a game catching on right now called, uh, I know you talked about playing it. Um, I just blanked on the name. Among Dang Us. It. Among Us. Yep. Yeah. Which, why is this catching on all of a sudden? It's like a two-year-old game. <sighs> yeah, I, some, I, I, don't I don't know. know. It's not much. And it's gotten some good pub recently. But I don't get why it's catching on. I was gonna say, if is a, it catching on? Like the only if a thing giant I streamer it, plays it, a game could potentially catch on from that. So the only thing with about us is I've heard Among at us. least four people right now individually tell me, "Hey, yeah, this thing is huge. It's getting a lot of hype. Like everyone's playing it." And then I look around at people actually playing Among Us, and I haven't seen one. I've seen well, a lot of talk about it. it it all it. it all depends on your community, right? When somebody says everybody does this, everybody does that, it's everybody they know or watch like, or, you know, streamers content they consume. It's it's that. Like Like our community. Everyone plays Rocket everyone League. Everyone plays Rocket League, man. But if you go into a CS or a you know, go into like a Call of Duty Discord or something, like maybe a couple people play Rocket League, right? But everybody plays Warzone. But yeah, yeah um, also so. with Among Us, you have to have so many players. It's not yeah. something you just go in alone. So that also makes it to where people want to play, but you need to have people to play. Mm -hmm. Which, with our new role bot or role assignment in the Discord, check it out. Um, we might be able to add in Among Us to help people find matches, which I think will help a lot. Because I know we got a few people in the Discord that want to play, but mm -hmm. can't get hooked up with people to play. But yeah, I'm kind of curious to try that game. Really want to try that game, actually. Yeah, I'll I'll check it out. Five bucks, dirt cheap. But I yeah. realized it was that cheap. Yeah. What else you guys been playing? Can, um, can we just go ahead and dive into uh, some Tony Hawk talk? You mean Superman talk? Tom only no. refers to that song by the ones. I still don't even know what song that is. Like. <laughs> it's it's a song that actually plays until you hit start. It's always the same. You oh. may no, not notice it now. It's always that know. song when you launch yeah. the game. The song that I think I'm top 100 in Beat Saber on. I think. I need the to song, check that one. The song that I immediately think of with Tony Hawk is. Yeah, 
that's good too. The, was that Rage Against the Machine? A gorilla Radio. Gorilla Radio. Yeah. yeah. Rage. Yeah. That's Lights what out. Comes to mind. Gorilla Radio. Turn that shit up. Yeah. Love that song. <laughs> can, can an entire podcast of just Irk singing Tony Hawk music. I could just loop that, that for an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. I've been forced to sing Back in Black at a bar before. Oh, I'm my good. God. You haven't lived until you've heard Eric do Back in Black. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Like, we just got done with our set. We're about to get off stage. And, like, Adam's dad fucking starts screaming out for it because he's possibly the only person out there that knows we dick around with that. <laughs> oh, so fucking weird. But, yeah. Um... Tony Hawk, that shit's good. Yeah, that's that really good. Real good. Really fucking good. It's, it's what a remaster should be. I guess it's is it a remake or a remaster? Like it's kind I, of both. It's a remake. I, I would put it as a remake. They added stuff into what the level or the Tony Hawk One stuff that was in Tony Hawk Two. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so if by really technical standards, I would call that a remake. And I think they ground up everything. Like they didn't reuse the engine. They made. It. Oh, I thought they reused a lot of the like physics and physics code i don't think they use that same engine because that engine was old yeah yeah no i i wouldn't imagine it's the same engine maybe same physics ported to a new engine i don't know how any of that works i'm not a game dev but either way it's it's really really fantastically done i mean it i haven't played tony hawk in probably over 10 years probably more than that honestly and immediately it felt exactly as i remembered it was immediate nostalgia with a, you know, coating of brand new shiny awesomeness. Like it's it's the perfect Looks amount of beautiful. It's this perfect amount of this is what I remember, but I'm not immediately bored by it because there's so much new stuff too. Yeah. Um the skater customization's really fucking nice. The create a skater is really fucking nice. So you can um, you can create a skater. You can put like different wheels and trucks on your board. Different levels of wear. You unlock different grip tape and boards and wheels and other accessories as you play the game. Just by playing the game. Um, yeah, they've they brought back the create a park mode, which I haven't tried yet, but we should absolutely do that. Um, I booted it up for a second, and it was. It is the park creator as if you were on console. Okay. So like it's very rigid in the way you can rotate in the spots. It's very under the hood grid. You can tell it's very grid based. Okay. Which is fine for Tony Hawk. But I, I'm waiting for Mario Maker type stuff where people make crazy ass rail worlds where you have to grind your entire way through a level. Yeah. That would be really cool. I, I'm really hoping for some cool stuff. I always love the creative parks, and um, I can't, can't remember what game introduced that. But from that point on, I love making parks. Tony making Hawk crazy, like okay, make the craziest Dude, like giant half pipes with huge drops and everything. Like it was, it was always so much fun to to make a park and play it. Yeah, and it just it, especially with online play, it gives the mm -hmm. game so much more replayability because sharing parks someone made this badass park they're gonna put it up for others to play mm -hmm. it's super fucking cool but i do have one gripe with the game and i think it may have just been me last night that i was kind of in a weird state but like i launched it but the game felt fast like the play felt a little faster than i remembered um when i played i felt slower than i remembered <laughs> I think but then again right. i haven't I just haven't played in so long. I was tired as shit when I launched. So, I mean, that That's could have also been why. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, though, having not played a Tony Hawk game in such a long time, I lost all of my Tony Hawk skill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Like, laughs> my muscle memory does not extend 20 or 15 years or whatever. <laughs> well, like, mentally, I'm like, okay. I kick flip onto the rail, man, I kick flip off, hit a manual, get to the vert. Okay. Then I go to kick flip on the rail and instantly bust my head on the pavement. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, I was messing up easy tricks and just like not rotating enough to land properly. And I, I couldn't even remember how to do the like when, you, when you're approaching a wall head on to like, you know, 
get yourself Kick going in the opposite it. direction, kicking off of it. Yeah. Um, I didn't I, know. I, uh, I didn't remember how to revert. Like I didn't. I didn't remember a lot, and I was really bad. I still haven't uh, got revert back into my play yet. Oh, that's that's the only thing I do. I only revert. Like, that's the only thing I'm good at. Um, one thing I did like that they added, you can customize your specials to whatever fucking keybinds. Yes. Yep. I love that feature. So, nice. so as of right now, I don't want to remember shit. So everything is up, down, or down, up. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I did the exact <laughs> same combination. <laughs> like front flip, up, down. Back flip, down, up. Dark side, down, up. Yeah, my uh, so I've got my dark side and my manual both to up or uh, down up Y. So like, if I'm hitting that grind, it's gonna be a special. If I'm not hitting that grind, it's gonna be a special. Oh, that's smart. In case you miss the grind, you still get a yep. special. Nice. Yep. That's actually cool. next level. Next level preparedness of suck, but very smart. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. That. So, that's next oh there we go it's next level hedging your bets if, if you want an so, easier way to do something give it to a lazy man tony hawk yes. is worth every penny i love it especially if you were a fan of the games if you have any nostalgia for that series or soundtrack whatsoever yeah it's worth every single penny i think and the multiplayer works really really well uh, that's, I'm actually that's something i haven't had a chance to dive into worked. yet well, because uh, of the way Tony Hawk works and you don't interact directly with other characters, it's lagless effectively. Yeah. Because it automatically it trusts matter. clients. Yeah. Yes. So it, it's, it works really well. You party up and it just puts you into a fucking lobby with people. And yep. then you have multiple modes you go through. You go so through what are there, uh, four or five modes? Five, I want to say. So, yeah, because you got. Go You've got it. the trick attack, which is your standard, okay, two minutes to run, get the highest score. And then you've got um, biggest combo. So you've got two minutes, get the biggest combo in the lobby. And then you've got um, the meet the score challenges. So hit a combo that's worth 100K or whatever. Uh, and then you've got total score. Hey, be the first to get to 150. Um, which means that in the, in the like score challenges, those lobbies can either last the full two minutes, but most of the time they're over in 10 seconds. Most of the time yes. you're partying up with someone like Magic fucking Dave who <laughs> makes the lobby last for a whole seven and a half seconds. Not an exaggeration. Literally seven seconds. It was over. He's just like, yeah, I, I forgot that I could land this. I got 400K, but I just went over. The point total they give you is ridiculously low for a Tony Hawk game. Yeah, it is. Like when people are landing million point combos, 150 point total is not much. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, but yeah, uh, and then of course the best mode, graffiti, where yes. if you do a trick on something, it paints your color. If somebody else does a trick on something and they get a higher score, they will steal it from you. So it's in your best interest to keep roaming around the map and finding things to get bigger and bigger combos off of while trying to hit the little shit that people forget about. Like, in school, nobody fucking grinds the tables. So I'm over here doing, like, 50 point, the lowest fucking shit you can do combos, because it doesn't matter. As long as they don't steal it, those are points to my name, man. Yeah. I, I love graffiti. It's easily the most strategic out of the modes in the, uh, in the multiplayer, and it works exactly as well as you remember. I like the uh, highest combo one. I like spending two minutes to see who can chain the highest fucking combo. Yeah. I mean, honestly, there's not a mode I dislike. The only thing I wish, and I, I would absolutely pay for DLC for this, I want a 10-minute free skate. Not in the competitive mode, but like mm -hmm. just lobbying up. Like if all of us could go to fucking warehouse and dick around for 10 minutes and it just shows, here's the highest score, here's the highest combo. Like just various dick around stats mm -hmm. that's what i want yes that would be I'd, great it'd I'd be like, so chill i'd like yeah. to see like a co-op co co -op. story mode yeah right. yeah that would be great okay yeah. so i want to get into something real quick that'd be called yeah. watching stuff not it's just seems like people using the exact same 10 square feet doing the same thing over and over for score oh yeah you can that tease it is, yes but i mean coming from 
anyone who enjoys MMOs and the grind of MMOs doing the same clicks over and over and over and over again. I mean, it's it's of that vein, only you're not getting experience, you're getting points. But that's only for trick attack. All the other modes kind of encourage you to move. Mm-hmm. Like graffiti, you have to cover ground. Uh, best combo, you, are, you have if, to get creative. If you're doing the same things over and over again, remember, this is still Tony Hawk. So if you do a kickflip in your combo, the kickflip you do next in that same combo is worth less points than the first one. So not in the same combo. This. Not in the same combo. After you land that combo, it goes down. Okay. So if you're doing oh, the same really? shit over I thought and over it was during again, the same it combo. It does hurt you. I thought I, it was I, during the same combo. I, I kind of remember that uh, the first time you land is when stuff decrements. So I remember, once again, this could have been me as a stupid kid, remembering, hey, hit Madonna's heavy in your first combo because they're worthless after that. Hmm. I always did uh, flip tricks. That's that's how I got my stuff up first. Yeah, I All always like tricks. Hit them in land. If, if you get a big air without a vert, always start with a big grab because it's so much more points. And then you just add on the grinds and the kick flips for the multipliers. At least that's always been my my strat on that. I I love Tony Hawk because just as much as it is a test of mechanical mastery like just like a fighting game would be it also does that great fighting game thing of no you have to know the combos know the terrain know what you're going for and know what your opponents are going to do to be a real effective or to have a really effective competitive edge like it's not just mechanical mastery you have to know what you're doing which is really cool yeah you have to have lines as people are calling it yeah also dobby is calling out a want for bmxxx what I want's a game you guys talked about on a cast with Dave when I was out. I want Dave Mira, man. Dave, Dave Mira, Mira was there. Uh, it was that was good. the best clone of Tony Hawk out there. The only issue I have with Dave Mira is the magnetic grinding, which was a call out from reviewers in the past. Is that your bike would magnetically snap to rails even if you were way off? Oh yeah, it was it yeah. was way too forgiving. But I mean. There are some of those challenges were pretty fucking hard to where you needed that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, if that game would have got the same treatment as Tony Hawk's, I kind of agree with Scott that I think the bike games would have been better than the skateboarding games. Yeah. Also, I, I just wonder about be, this. I don't know. It, Tony Hawk. Dave Mira is that the soundtrack just was not nearly as good. Like it was, it was still it was, solid. It was fine. But it was not, there's, there's been no reality in where I've went to Spotify, typed in Dave Mira BMX soundtrack. <laughs> but Tony Hawk? Yeah, it's up in my top 10 of most, li- of most listened to playlists. It's also not a game you think about as much. Like, Tony yeah, Hawk is a, a cultural clone. phenomenon much more than Dave Mira's BMX is. Yeah, for sure. So, this actually... So there's a whole skateboard culture. I mean, there is for BMX too, but it's much smaller, at least from what my perception is. Do you think that could have been different had Dave Mira got the Tony Hawk treatment and Tony Hawk only got the one game like Dave Mira? Yes. Dave Mira had multiple games. Dave Mira had lots of games. Yes. No, I mean, they didn't do direct sequels to that though, did they? Because I don't ever remember a direct sequel. I remember Dave Mira BMX too. Oh. I had it on the Dreamcast. Huh. Oh, well, that's also why Dreamcast. Kelly Slater Pro Surfer did not get a direct. Well, <laughs> okay. An, uh, a not the Razor clone? Scooter game. No, but 1080 snowboarding for the 64. Hell yes. That you know, shit was I, legitimately fun and hard. I have to say, like, there are some things in the game industry that's just really sad to see. So 1080 releases and... It's loved. It's an absolutely beloved game until like six months later, Tony Hawk Pro Skater comes out and just fucking routes the thing. <laughs> like, oh, pray, pray releases are like, look, we've got this brand new portal engine technology. You walk in this one like weird thing, it'll take you to a completely different area. It's going to blow your fucking mind. And it did for two weeks because then Portal came out. <laughs> like, it's so fucking unfortunate to see games that are legitimately good get accidentally upstaged by something with the exact same mechanics. 
Yeah. That's true. And that's what happened with Hydro Thunder. I don't know the story with Hydro Thunder and H2 Overdrive. Uh, it's yeah, bad. I don't think about it. But I don't believe that's quite the same thing, Scott. If I remember right, there's actual like crossover developers between those two. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a passion project. But yeah, like H2 Overdrive is legit. I Gina's great at it. I just enjoy it. <laughs> Especially in arcade. That's one of the few games that I don't like to play if I'm not in arcade. Yeah. I I played the shit out of Hydro Thunder on the Dreamcast, but the arcade was always better. It's like Daytona USA. Give me that fucking cabinet. Let me sit down on it. You yeah. give me the same game on my computer, I'm not playing it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally get that. My old roommate would they would have a game where you would have to um Hold your beer while playing the game. So you either had to drink a lot of your beer quick so you can shift or take the hit and go automatic. <laughs> well, have really you ever played Mario Kart drinking game? Yes, where you um can never drink and drive at the same time, but you have to finish your yeah. beer before you finish the race. Exactly. <laughs> so there's a lot of strategies. You can either drink it real quick up front, which may or may not work in your favor, or you can stop right before the finish line and try to chug your beer before anyone else I, catches it. I up. would hate that game so much because I don't like drinking anything fast. Yeah. Like, not even just like beer or whatever, but like I don't I don't like chugging anything with the exception of 3 a.m. water. But other than that. Yeah, yeah 3 a.m. water, everyone does that. That parched hey, throat. Guys, oh. Late water tastes different. <laughs> that's because you, you don't just want it. You need it. Water at 3 a.m. is the best fucking thing you could ever drink. Ever. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, the only Nintendo drinking game I've ever done was with Smash Brothers with you and Brett. <laughs> Where uh, every, that was a terrible idea. Every time you got killed, you had to drink and then first out had to take a shot. Yep. We didn't think that through because that's a self-fulfilling prophecy once the alcohol starts kicking in. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> whoever was doing good starts doing better. Very slippery slope. <laughs> it yes, was, it is. It was misaligned incentives for sure. We we did not balance check that. I haven't played Smash in so long. I oh. play it probably once a month. I will get on. I'll get my ass kicked online. I'll have a good time for a couple hours, and that's it. It's a game I don't enjoy playing online. I much rather play in person with people. Oh, I agree. But you know, right now, yeah, I'll take online. I'm glad it exists. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, I'll actually just play it with computers rather than online. Okay. I mean, uh, given Nintendo's online system, yeah, that's probably the better choice. Though, what was speaking? What was cool though was when it first came out. I remember you and Renee are over. We were playing catchphrase and on the TV, we just had the online mode of smash going and just started showing random matches of actual people. Yeah, it was great. That was really fucking cool. So I'll let you guys handle this because, because I am me. Um, Polar access. What's the best Mario Kart in your guys' opinion? Either Mario Kart 64 or just Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the most recent one. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is straight fire. 8 Deluxe is fucking killer. Um, I would say 8 Deluxe runners, runner up of N64 with a special mention to Double Dash. I did not like Double Dash. Really? I thought, I thought the Wii one was fine. But like Nintendo, they're shoehorning that goddamn Wii remote into everything. <laughs> I still think Mario Kart controlled better with anything other than the Wii remote. I enjoyed Mario Kart on the DS more than Mario Kart Wii. Hmm. I yeah, think I have Mario that. Kart on the DS. Yeah, it was really which, good. Which, really? Which Mario Kart 6 or 7 was on that. Uh, okay. I thought it was 6. Could I be. I, I don't remember. I just, as far as I was concerned, it was just Mario Kart. Mario Kart and the Game Boy Advance wasn't terrible either. Man, the Game Boy Advance had some games on it that had no business being on it. Yeah, Tony great. Hawk, Splinter the Development Cell. Diary, Splinter Cell. Yeah, Splinter Cell for the Game Boy Advance, and believe it or not, it was pretty good. It was actually pretty good. 
I had I had a bunch of weird shit. Uh, I also had the Cody the Kojima staple, the game he is most known for, Boktai on the Game Boy Advance that had a solar sensor in the cartridge to recharge your gun and to actually do different things in the game. You would have to go out on sunny or cloudy days. Uh, if you went out on a cloudy day, your guns were less effective and the enemies were way harder, but you got better reward. But if you needed something to be easy, like if you were going up against a boss, you got to have the sunlight, so you have to play outside. <laughs> Which, by the way, Boktai on the OG Game Boy Advance screen, where if there's any light on it whatsoever, you can't see it, that game was hell. But I played it, <laughs> damn it, I was there. That seems like a really unfortunate game to have if you live in one of those parts of Alaska that gets like really extended <laughs> uh, or times of darkness. Yeah, you're either easy mode for six months or hard mode for six months. Yeah, yeah. We uh, yeah. we actually played on the Game Boy Player on the GameCube, and I had my little brother hold the GameCube up to the window so I could get sunlight. I mean, couldn't you just put a flashlight to it? No, because it's solar specifically. Mm. Yeah, specifically. Specifically. Pacific. Pacifically. Yep. Anyway, more games. More games. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm just gonna list off a couple things I did real quick. I uh, did some more speed runners. Um, every once in a while I'll get back to that game. Fun game. Um, yeah, just a quick race game. Fall guys, kept up on that. Ready for season two. Not doing too much with it. Tarkov, same old, same old. Did some Tower Unite though. I will say, man, that, oh. that keeps pulling me in for I random ass shit. Tower. It is such a piece of shit. I love it so much. Their side modes are good. The arcade is fucking awesome. Last week after the podcast, Tom, and it was last week, right, where you and I were just watching a bunch of shit up in the arcade area? Yeah. We literally went to one of the rooms and just, they've got YouTube integration, so we threw a bunch of meme shit on the TV and just watched videos for like a couple hours sitting drinking beers and tower unite i, I, mean, I love that game it is it is jank as shit but god damn is it fun so what's the difference it, between doing what you guys did with tower unite and then just doing like a watch together because Urk was dressed as carl from aqua Teen, oh. and i was dressed as a 2d sanic you don't have you don't get it you don't have a pair of sweatpants and a wife beater in your closet to just wear in real life? <laughs> you know, I could, but it still wouldn't be the same. Or a Sanic costume, honest, for that matter? Sanic. <laughs> I, I do not have my Sanic costume anymore, unfortunately. Every time I play Tower, though, I always come out of it wanting to play Rec Room. Yeah. Every time. Well, when you get your VR stuff set up again, let's do some Rec Room. I mean... Hell, that could happen tonight, possibly. All right. I'm in. It's just a, that's another really fun chill with people thing. Yeah. Uh, anywho, though, that's what I was on. Tom, I'm going to guide you because I really want to know about this and I want to make sure I ask questions while it's here. Okay. You played something that you know I want to play. Yes. Yes, I did. And I specifically called it out last night while I was playing it. Uh, I picked up Rogue Legacy 2. Um, so it's early access. Um, the I, I love the hell out of Rogue Legacy 1, but didn't put nearly enough hours into it. Uh, and so I figured I'd, I'd jump on early this time around. I've been in a roguelite mood, and that just kind of scratches that itch. Uh, so if you've never played Rogue Legacy, and you have played a Metroidvania, um, you know any of the recent Castlevania games or Metroid where you're wandering around, defeating enemies, getting power-ups... This is a rogue version of that. Um, so 2D action platformer. Uh, and it works really well. Um, so Rogue Legacy, it wasn't like an ugly game by any means, but it, it was fine. It had its own kind of aesthetic, but god damn, 2 looks so much better. Uh, everything is hand-drawn, and you can see it. Like super high-def, hand-drawn textures and animations. The game is a goddamn joy to look at. It's not as pretty as something like Cuphead, but nothing is. Um, yeah. I gotta say, though, it's it's definitely an upgrade. Um, so I'm, I'm working through... I can see the end in sight already because the game is early, early access, where 
they've actually got excuse me uh, uh, they've actually got some stuff <laughs> yeah they've uh -huh. actually got um a bunch of locks on the upgrade and castle uh progression screen so you can't unlock everything and it even says hey this will be unlocked in a future patch um i'm nowhere like i've only played for two hours maybe three um i'm nowhere near the end of that content but i could see me hitting it in about 10. um it's it's early access it'll get filled out uh, i'm really excited to see where this goes and the old mechanic of you know getting three heirs to choose from and they've all got something fucked up or weird about them is fantastic uh like i was playing a tunnel visioned vegan um, which literally, my vision was limited to a short bar on the screen and everything else was black, and eating food that, uh, or eating meat, would actively hurt me. Um, but oh, with Lord. that, it gave me, uh, like, plus 20% gold. So every, every piece of gold I picked up was plus 20%. Um, so if you are playing with somebody who's actively hurting you, or that actively makes the game harder, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like, there was one where you would play a one-hit kill character. You take one hit, but your gold, plus 150%. So it's definitely a risk-reward thing. It's a lot of fun. Um, so Scott calls out waiting for early... He's starting to wait for early access games. And mm. I'm not as a whole on that train, but for this one, I am. Because I feel the way I play the game is going to be determined on what all skills I have available. And yes. I want the full game to be there before I start. I totally agree with you. Uh, and yes. honestly, for some games, I've ruined them for myself because I got done playing and then the game was finished. Prison Architect, I put in a bunch of hours in that game. I put in a shit ton of hours right when the Kickstarter launched. And then I never touched it again. The game has literally had a year plus worth of updates since then that has fundamentally changed the game and how it plays. And I haven't seen any of it because I got my 20 hours and I was done. You can only make a first impression once. Well, and it's also there's certain games that you're only going to spend so much time in. Yeah. And I want yeah. that time to be in the game when the game is complete and full featured. Yeah. Any, any yeah, kind of story driven yeah. game or. Or anything like that, I would say, don't even bother early access. I, you know, I was going to wholly agree with that, but there's another game I played this week where the early access is only made better by the fact that there's story that's gated behind, you know, the devs making it, which is Hades. Hades has been fantastic. Uh, and the story segments are only getting better because, guess what? Every time I go back to the game, every single patch, there's a couple more pieces of dialogue or lore or other things to pick up, other new people to meet. And it's worked out really well. Now, not every company is super giant games, but God damn, have they done a good job with Hades. Yeah. Um, you love to see it. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. And Scott's, I'm trying to read what he was saying, um, but effectively, do, 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 waiting for one of you guys to say something so I can read, because some reason I can't do both at the Torchlight same time. Torchlight 3 got demolished, Vidabi is saying, for that exact reason. And he's all for supporting them, but he wishes they weren't releasing games too soon. And yeah, I feel the same way about Torchlight 3, that I can see the beginnings of something great there, but honestly, I'm going to put more time into it when it's a little bit more complete, because I can already see I'm going to run out of content. And if I play it like I usually play Torchlight... I'm gonna just well, I'm just gonna burn all the content right away. What Scott's referring to is early access games coming out and then they're getting bombed with reviews. Yeah. So it ruins reputation of the game before the game's actually complete. Yeah. Which yeah. is yeah. actually kind of something that happened potentially with Halo when they did the release of the trailer kind of thing. Yeah. It's a similar concept. Yeah. Yeah, except people are too I don't know if it's entitled or just dumb to take into account that a game is early access before they start review bombing it. But I can play it. It needs to be good. Yeah, exactly. Ignoring Completely. the fact... It's become so common for a game to come out in early access that people, I think, have forgotten that these are not good, done games and that you need to, you know, give them a decent amount of leeway. Yeah. Oh. 
it's a double-edged sword. While I think that it has done good, I think early access is now overused. For sure. It, I, a lot of dev studios are using early access as honestly their only financial lifeboat. They want to stay independent or they can't get publisher support for some reason. And uh, they use early access purchases to fund and continue development. Unfortunately for some studios, it means that if your game doesn't sell well in early access, it just doesn't get developed, which I guess is a way of embracing market forces. People weren't interested enough in the promised product, so they didn't mm -hmm. buy it, so it doesn't get built. But I, then you have, you have the bad thing of, here's what we've built so far, here's what we want to do, people buy in, and what you've built so far isn't what you want to do. Like yeah. It's getting there, but it's not there. And yeah. then people review the game. Oh, this isn't what they're saying it's supposed to be. Well, it's still in fucking early access. They haven't touched the parts of what they're wanting to do. Yeah. And Comrade Money also calls out something good that there's also a lot of stages of early access, right? I have played early access games, which is like, hey, this is literally done except for some polish. Like the whole game is fucking here. Um, and then there are games where you know, it's it's a skeleton. It's quite literally asset copy paste skeleton. We can see where it might be good one day, mm -hmm. but they're a couple years out at least. And I think it's important to be able to differentiate those things. I don't think there's ever going to be like a golden rubric that we can point to that says, hey, it's a level five early access game or anything like that. But it's important to be able to call out those things like, okay, how finished is this? Hades was basically a full game. They were just working on content um you can you can end up with games though that seem like they're damn near finished and never end up finishing i'm looking at yeah. um oh my god it was a terraria starbound clone that was in yeah. deep space and it was in early access for like three years and they're like okay we're done with this yeah i would be surprised be if escape from tarkov ever got actually done honestly yeah that's that's a game with just insane amounts of interacting systems and all like, the stuff that they are wanting to do with it that it's not even close to that point yet yeah that said the game actually runs great for early access man yeah no it doesn't <laughs> oh no it's, no i mean the, the gameplay itself not the optimizations of like the way it performs i mean like the systems in the game function great the gunplay feels great the frame rate's garbage <laughs> and and it's it's got its fair share of bugs too um yeah it's it's got it's it's got a lot of jank i can i, I mean, haven't I, ran into too much i mean just like i mean not just server stuff but a lot there's a lot of server stuff um bugs with like the traders and having to restart the game to fix something and stuff like that nothing that's too you know game breaking i guess but or the the bug where you you're holding down the left click on a full auto weapon and then it just stops firing. Oh, I haven't hit with that. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I've died to that. Uh, I was going to say from your tone and your expression, that has <laughs> happened to you. That's happened to me. Yep. Like, Oh, my uh, gun is a full auto. I guess I'm losing this fight. Dobby, Dobby calls out uh, torchlight's cutscenes The, for the past few first few quests were sketches from a storyboard. Um, so Devil May Cry 5 had a, a bonus option where you could unlock like the, the pre pre visualized cutscene, which means that they're not CGI. They're not part of the game engine. It's literally actors acting out what will be CGI in the future. And honestly, that's kind of cool. It makes the game so much fucking better because Devil May Cry has always been super fucking campy. Um, yeah. Like, it's, it's purposefully, you know, what they're doing with that series. It's not meant to be taken seriously. There's literally an emo child who reads poetry to kill guys. Um, <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> the the pre-visualized cutscenes, sometimes it's like one guy using action figures and, like, smashing them together in front of a camera as the cutscene plays out. And it's just fucking fantastic. It, there is everything to love about that game. There's people like wearing costumes made out of cardboard that's clearly put together in some guy's garage, acting out these like super awesome campy cutscenes, and it couldn't be any better. I absolutely love it. You, you guys are gonna have to look up those cutscenes if you haven't seen it. It's great. I don't know that I played a Devil May Cry since three. 
Five is supposed to be really, really it. good. And it's cheap now. As I say, the entire series is cheap now. Yeah. Ah, uh, anywho, any other games? Uh, Google Earth in VR is is chill and fun. And I found an office building that was neat. I hey, literally well. somebody did three pictures of inside of a German office building. So I oh, wandered well. around, and went to work. I said on a meeting, <laughs> it was great. They had a Craig in the corner. Got a oh, awesome. Keurig. I thought you said yeah. a Craig. I'm like, how the fuck do you know yeah, his name is Craig? Craig in the corner? <laughs> Come on, you know Craig. He's just sitting there. Oh. Being a douche as usual. Fucking Craig. <laughs> Asshole. But anyway, yeah, Google Earth uh, VR is great. It's chill. Nice. Yeah. I just played some Rocket League yeah. in Tarkov this week. I don't really have anything else other than anything exciting or new other than the Tony Hawk remake. Yeah. God, that, that remake's so good, though. That I is really, really that. good. Uh, Definitely recommend well, it. Absolutely. What is that? Like 30 bucks? I yeah. can't remember. Was it 30 or 40? 30 base game, 40 if you want the deluxe edition. Yeah, I just went base. Or maybe it was 40 base game, thir- uh, 50 deluxe. I can't remember. Neither can I. I, I, I did get bad. a nice surprise I when I went to buy it, though. Night. Yeah. I had a, apparently I had a ten dollar Epic coupon from like the last big sale they had when I bought Control. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I had no idea I had it. I completely forgot. So I went to buy Tony Hawk. I was like, oh, it's ten dollars cheaper. That is fantastic. Like fuck yes. Yeah, it's like finding an, a twenty dollar bill in the the dryer after you dry your clothes that you didn't know you had. Yep. It's like yes, income, even though it's not because I technically already had it, but income. <laughs> but. It's- Surprise it's like getting income. taxes. <laughs> it's like, I got money back. I don't care if it was already my money. I got it back. <laughs> I got it back. Get off it, Scott. God damn it. Um, He's calling out the fact that I'll use like a five or something as a bookmark. <laughs> I, I, I actually used to do that. It's not a flex until you use a hundo, though. Agreed. If you're book, bookmarking Benji's. All right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um oh it's about that time this. isn't it it's about that time you felt you fellas ready for this yeah are you ready for this so um yeah it's that time of month it's top 10 plays of august it is so everyone submitted clips into the discord plays of the day and we have collected the top 10 clips uh most people that entered were actually looked at some of you people need to remember to save your fucking clips. Okay. If your game deletes them after, what, seven days, please save them seven so days. that we can put your beautiful clips in our montage. If you're still out there, Polar, I'm looking at you, man. I'm looking at you. Polar X, save your clips, please. And with that, without let's, further ado, let's roll that beautiful footage. Let that new music sink in. We got Cathod. We got Cathod. Oh, Bam, what oh a my series God. of events. I want to know who those other two players are, too. That is a fantastic play. Look, he jumps now. And he hits that second <laughs> hit. Love it. Here we go. Slugger. This oh, man just slugger. popped into chat. What's slugger. up, chat? With oh my god, power my on that flick. Jesus, man. It just gets fucking sent. Just yeet. Behind the defender, man. too. He wasn't ready for it to be covering that direction. A yeah. little bit of yeet. Guild and Giraffe, firmly known as Giraffe Girl. With a fantastic pass. Sweet, sweet pass back, as we call it in basketball. Yeet. Little, Such little a John Roy all day. John Roy all day. I like the way that car looks, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's pretty. I don't even know what car it is. There's been so many cars. It's it's the double touch. That's the it's, car. Oh. Yeah, it's a double touch car. Off the back wall. Boop, boop. Nice. Got That's a good angle on that one too. Next run. Then here's next run. 
Uh, in the backfire. Off. What? Reset. Oh shit. Flip. Oh shit. Oh, oh my god. The late <laughs> what? <flip. laughs> Damn. What a late fucking flip on this. He wasn't ready Double to get reset. styled on like that. And he definitely wasn't ready to get styled on like, like that with the backfire. But his style is going to be ready to style. Speaking of styling. Oh, oh my god, what a oh bitch. fucking <laughs> That was insane. I always feel dirty saying cuxer. Boom. But the cuxer pinch. Fucking dirty. Sanic Sanic cat. Cat. Not to be confused with Santa Cat. Doing the Ooh. moves. <laughs> I like that one. Look how look how far back he takes the ball up. Like that's three quarters court. Put a couple of Twizzlers in there too. I like it. Getting twisty. Joey. I love this one. Oh, the BP oh, oh. special. What? Nice. That's just rude. Also with the cool card design going on. Yeah. Matching red hat. And also, I love those fucking your own territory redirects on the yeah. deck. Bomb. Oh, oh, oh. This is a nice one. Goes up. So touch and touch. And gets the angle. Nice. That adjustment right at the end to get that angle proper. Very nice. And the style Such beforehand. A Throwing a couple of twisties. And pulls it in. And one Back to Luke, who just a little too high and now a dangerous two on one the other way. Wonder one, wonder two. Oh, oh man, these guys got experience. This was the, the clinching wonder. game oh, that was in the uh, before the playoffs it was last to just split. Damn. Amazing. Such a pretty double. Such a pretty double. Ah, that music, though. So nice, Adam. So nice. Hey, thanks. I'm feeling very chilled out right now. <laughs> yeah. Very chill. And one last time, you want to chill on the top 10 plays with the rest of these badass clips. Make sure to put your shit in the top plays of the day and make sure to save your stuff. Save your clips, please. Sorry, I meant clinching round, Scott. <laughs> it was uh, round five. If they, it was winner go or loser go home. But speaking of games, shall we get back into ours? Let's get no. back into ours. No? Okay. We'll just sit here. It's okay, Polar X. We forgive you. <laughs> this time. <laughs> this time. Next time, you're not going to be so lucky. Yes. This time, gadget. Reference that some people may not get. Anyway. There we go. Um, let's get some news, shall we, fellas? News time. Yeah. And um, what do we call this? Our weekly dick wag or corporate dick waggling update? Dick waving yeah. contest? Weekly, yeah, yeah, corporate dick waving. Um, uh, go for it, Tom. <laughs> Epic uh, has filed uh, an almost 200-page brief uh, asking for courts to force Apple to let Fortnite back in the App Store even though they broke contractual obligations and are now crying about it. Um, but mom. Yeah. Yeah. But mom, I didn't mean to punch him. It was an accident. He hit me first. <laughs> he was right where I was swinging. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's corporate dick waving. Yay. Yeah. Corporate dick waving. Not hey. much to say there. No. All right. On with other news. <laughs> PUBG and 118 mobile apps are banned by the Indian governments. Yep. Why? Why There's been though? some, some uh, political tension. And Is it's it with ten, because Tencent? Yeah, because because China. That's okay. That's that's it. That's that's yeah, the real because reason. Tencent. Um. So yeah, there's uh. Sorry, Adam. Just Get out of the way. It's my ball. For no reason. <laughs> um, so anyway, yes, the, the Indian government uh, did ban 118 apps uh, with Chinese connections due to politics. Going to leave it there. Uh, and unfortunately, yeah. gamers are getting caught in the crossfire. 
uh PUBG mobile is actually incredibly insanely like top five app in the nation kind of popular in india um which it's really negatively affecting a lot of gamers out there which is fucking unfortunate that you know this bullshit is taking away people's outlet and taking away their fun and so play how you want to play i get that man i don't see PUBG being fun on a phone it's actually not bad. I've put in a lot of time in PUBG Mobile and Fortnite Mobile, actually. Uh, they play way better than they should. Um, it's fun. It, yeah, like, it's not it's bad. Not it's as a... tactical or cerebral as the desktop version, but there's honestly nothing wrong with it. Other than the ungodly amount of microtransactions in that platform. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I was just saying in general, like it seems weird to me, but obviously it's got to play pretty well. People love it. Yeah. All right. Another quick news. Um, EA Play, formerly EA Access, is now live on Steam. You can get it for five bucks a month or an, actually a pretty good deal. $30 for an entire year of it. There are some cool titles on there. Titanfall. You have the sports games. You got some old ones like Mirror's Edge that they, I think, acquired with the rights of later. Uh, no, no. That was part of uh, EA's indie push. They actually did develop that in-house. The original one or the sequel? The original. Oh, okay. For some reason, yeah. I was thinking that was the post thing. Oh, okay. Either uh, way, that's a really good game if you haven't played it. Here's yeah. Edge is fantastic. Yes, it is. You would not Deliver think a first-person parkour game would have worked, but it works. It's the original delivery service game before Stranding. Yeah. So it's, shall we say it, the first Stranding type game? It yeah, the first, the first Strand type, type game. game. One of the first for sure. Ah, uh, all right. But anyway, that's there. Check it out if you're interested in EA stuff. Um, speaking of EA, um, yeah, they, <laughs> they're they're slipping some advertisements into their most recent UFC game. Um, but I swear, I swear, this happened before in their sports games where they were actually doing like with timeouts or in between plays of Madden, they were actually showing advertisements for the sake of realism i could have sworn they were doing ads in loading screens i don't think this is new and but I, this game and i'm gonna go ahead and go on the record saying this doesn't bother me the way they're doing it i it, yeah so i saw it, it actually it feels I, pretty good the way they're doing it actually i saw that clip and well, first of all the the headline or whatever the title of the post that i saw was that they're showing a commercial in the middle of the game. And I was Which like, is not the case. wait a second. <laughs> um, but no, it's like, and between rounds. Yeah. Between rounds well, like, or, or right before and after a little replay, it shows yeah. during the transition of the screen into the replay, uh, a quick little, you know, splash screen basically of the ad. It's like a second yeah. and a half of a title screen and then it's gone. So Dobby does call out something that's that's important here, which is it was added in after reviews through a patch, so it wouldn't get caught up in the review cycle. Um, which I would agree is shady, right? It might it might be incidentally shady, like they might not have done that on purpose. I'm not well, even, yeah. even though it's okay, I'm not going to ascribe it to them, like ascribe malice to them if I'm not sure. It, well, it could have just been something that they were always planning on. It didn't have it ready in time. Mm -hmm. Is the boys the only thing being advertised right now? Because if so, that could be the reason is that just launched. And it wouldn't have launched until after reviews. Yeah, I don't know. Could and be. games have been trying to figure out a way to work realistic ads into their world for a long time. Remember, uh, Burnout 3 actually had uh, live updatable billboards that were Which used. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty famously by uh, Axe Body Spray and the Obama campaign back when mm -hmm. when that game was the the new hotness. Um, I I don't think like stuff like that is terrible. Like you know the advertisements in the stadiums of a Madden game, that's really realistic. It's really immersive, and having those things you know be live updatable can provide some financial assistance to the devs. Actually, Having, some of those are legally required because of name rights of stadiums. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, the ads of Wrigley Stadium are there because that's part of the experience of being at Wrigley. 
Um, the, the monster energy drink adds or, and and product placement and death draining, however, not as immersive. Yeah, that's that's totally, <laughs> totally different. And I, I don't know why anyone would add product placement like that where it just doesn't belong. By the way, uh, the best thing that goes with my low carb monster energy drink is an organ, organic nutrition, all in one shake. Comes in creamy chocolate fudge Cut him. and. All right. So a uh, polar in chat <laughs> does call out that Rocket League has some really good potential for this. And I think we've actually hit on yeah. this in the past. Mm -hmm. Like they advertise for themselves. Yeah. I was going to say the studio, key, the very key difference is the fact that they're advertising, advertising their own esports events and, or, yeah. um, you know, showing a little love to the, whoever wins those esports events by putting their name on the little banners inside the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel that they could have made some more money from themselves and possibly not win with Epic had they leveraged that a little more because this game is in a position like look at these billboards right in front of us i was gonna i was gonna they bring those up if you didn't yeah. very easily put product placement on those easily yeah. and it mm -hmm. wouldn't affect the game at all no yeah but yeah so, okay Tom, yeah go for it Tommy's asking you know has gaming fallen on a hard economic times or is this more of an embracing the popularity and making more money all right so let's be clear the the people adding advertisements we are talking about electronic arts here no they have not fallen on hard time if anything gaming is one of the only economies in this weird uh fucked up post plague world uh that is doing really well because people are locked inside their houses and we're buying video games because what the fuck else are we gonna do um this is literally a case of ea saying hey could we make money with this cool let's do it which I, it's not a bad thing alone. Making money is not inherently That's evil. That's why companies um, exist. Well, and like, let's put yeah. it this way. And games like Rocket League, if they had ads, yeah. the life of the game can get longer because they can yeah. actually put more stuff into the game because the game is monetized outside of players. The, the, of one, the one issue and the thing that I'm worried about and that I think scares a lot of people is, you know, where does it end, right? So like, throwing ads into Madden stadiums or MLB stadiums or Rocket League stadiums, I think is totally fine. Now, am I okay with watching an interstitial ad during a loading screen for Rocket League? Fuck no, I'm not. And that's the part where I don't want it to get to, right? I think that's the thing people are really worried about is the fucking gas station ads that blast your ear off when you're just trying to fill up the damn car. Fuck Dude, you, Safeway. Um, a lot of the times in the morning, I'm getting gas for work like way earlier than anybody should be up. So I'm the only one at the gas station and you can hear all five pumps echoing the same stupid ad, like oh my 0.1 seconds after each last one. It's just ob obnoxious yeah. blasting of noise. But, um, yeah. but I think there's a, I'm there's a point where, like you said, during the loading screens for ads, yes, that sucks. And it's a little bit egregious and I don't want to see it, but the real, absolutely diabolical tipping point is when it actually halts gameplay yes if it affects it makes you wait longer than you would have normally waited on a loading screen or something or stops you in the middle of gameplay that is absolutely inexcusable to me yeah and i agree with dobby dobby saying you know when it starts getting into gameplay it makes no fucking sense like monster energy drink surviving the the human apocalypse and still existing in the world of Death Stranding. That's fucking stupid. It is absolutely fucking stupid. You can tell it's literally just there to make money. It has no no reason it to Could have been literally anything that. else. Yeah. Yeah. Like, come the fuck on, guys. And Polarex saying, hey, they might start selling ad-free games for 20 bucks. That already happens in the mobile market where you pay yes. a, a microtransaction to get rid of ads, which I have done for games that I like. Um, and it also happens with a lot of various devices where they'll sell you, you know, a version that shows you ads on a lock screen mm -hmm. or for 25 bucks more, you can get the one that doesn't. Uh, speaking so, of this device right in front of me. <laughs> uh, yeah. We, too, we also but can let's see not the talk about that, that device. But... Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm thinking of games like, um, No Man's Sky. Stay with me for a second. I'll get there. Um, All right. After the, after the release, they have done a fuck ton of work. Like we're talking new, new game and a half worth of development into that game. Yeah. Like it's amazing their support. 
let's say at the very beginning, they had already reached the saturation point of game sales and they weren't picking up new players. If they don't have a means to monetize, the game dies and we don't get all this extra content. And that's where I think if they can find a tasteful way to work in ads, it can help games do what No Man's Sky did. So if they I, can't get it on sales, it helps the longevity of games because eventually sales stop. I can see that going one of two ways because like in the best of cases, if you have a dev like Hello Games that are going to put in the work, yeah, that could be great. But frankly, what's more likely to happen is that FIFA 2021, they don't put any fucking extra dev into that. They don't give a shit. They're just going to rake in the cash for a worse experience for the hell of it. They will put some extra yeah, dev in it. To get the the ads in. You can't let the worst take away from the good. But like you also can't let, dictate. you can't let your best aspirations color what would be an eventuality in this space. It would be one eventuality, but not the complete eventuality. Yeah. I don't think and it doesn't have to be the eventuality, ever. right? That's a slippery slope yeah. fallacy. Like if it's tastefully done, I'm all for it. Like what they do in UFC, I'm all for that. Go for it, yeah. man. That was tasteful. That gets them some extra money. It helps the game server stay up longer because that's another aspect. Even if they're not developing anymore, those game servers have to stay up for them to be able to do this shit. So if nothing else, it'll keep the game servers alive for a game longer. Yeah. That being said, a meme game that's like over the top, everything is an ad would also be kind of funny. <laughs> Like, I mean, you brought up Death Straining and how ridiculous the monster ads, or not ads, they're not even ads, but I mean, how ridiculous the monster the placement. product placement is. And, but hey, the game itself. Hi, <laughs> Pine Box Coffins yeah. today. Pine Box. Where are you going to be? But, but as like annoying and egregious as that is in the game and how obvious it's product placement, in a game like that, I didn't really mind because I just thought it was funny. Because the game itself is is so serious with and also not serious. Like you, you've got this a, attempt at a serious, you know, super profound story, and you've got all this camp layered on top of it, and then you've got a monster energy drink uh, product and then placement. For some reason, Jif extra crunchy peanut butter. Because extra choose, crunchy. Uh, choose Jif. Uh, okay, so there is something being called out here by dobby when are we calling it an ad um call of duty worked the remington 870 into their game scott wasn't able to buy one because they were out everywhere this is one of the most widely distributed guns on the market and they were completely sold out because they had worked with call of duty and gotten to the game when's it an ad do you do you remember when call of duty was like obsessed with historical accuracy just like medal of honor was just like assassin's creed was that was a fun time. But no, no, no. But you, that, that is an, the question. That is an, an interesting. Ad, that is an interesting point, though. Yeah, I mean, because is, is you see this yeah, all the time. Honestly, the world. Sure. You see this all the time in racing games and in mm -hmm. uh, shooters with rocket models. League. They had licensed DLC. Hell, in the fishing VR game, I have a half of, about half of the things you can buy in there for your fishing rod are licensed equipment from mm -hmm. real manufacturers, right? And I, I mean, frankly, for that sort of stuff, is it an ad? Yes, but isn't an ad that adds to my immersion? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. If I'm playing a sports guy and I'm trying to make the choice between, you know, the ad-supported digital Reebok shoes I can outfit my player with and the mm -hmm. ad-supported Nike shoes I can outfit my player with, that's great because I can make my guy exactly how I want and make it look just like the pros I watch on TV. Now. If that Nike shoe, if the Nike cleat that I buy costs, you know, $5 in, in real world money and gives me a stat advantage in multiplayer, no, that's no longer okay. So there, there is a point where this gets to be bad, but honestly, mm -hmm. depending on the type of game and what you're going for, I don't necessarily think product placement is a death knell. In something like Death Stranding, which has no business in having it, yeah, that annoys me. But in a sports game... Yeah, man, give, or, me, give me the fucking baseball bat that fucking Babe Ruth had and make me pay a whole lot of money for it. Or, or okay, even like so if, you, if you're playing Grand Theft Auto or something and you go inside one of the grocery stores and everything on the shelf is actual branded stuff like, oh, there's Kellogg's Corn Flakes and, yeah. you know, Lucky Charms Kellogg's and all of this. Flakes. That's not good. Next level. 
Next level for you then, Tom. I want to get your opinion on this. You like it when it's immersive. Well, you know, there's a fuck ton of ads that play during sports games. <laughs> so uh, they did this. They actually did this. And in between, like, pause states, they'd be like, you know, this this timeout is brought to you by Kellogg's Corn Flakes for when you're done murdering hookers. Um, like, if, if we're continuing the, the Grand Theft Auto analogy. Um, I, so... If it's if the pause is going to be there anyway, and more importantly, if you've got an option to turn the shit off, I don't think it's awful. Oh, there's going to be no option. Like if someone's paying for that ad, if they're throwing ads in, yeah, don't part of the ad. Well, I, they don't have to be paying for it, right? Because you can dynamically say with your console connected to the internet, this person watched the ad, you're paying for it. This person didn't, you're not. Right? Like they're <laughs> you build it exactly how an the ad people platform who works. brought the the premium more expensive version of the game that doesn't that doesn't have ads in it yeah yeah not forced to so you know if it's not halting gameplay for the sake of halting gameplay i'm not fully opposed to it that said it could get bad quickly right it's it's really easy to tip over into the this is no longer just emerging yes it's now slimy that's sad, yeah. but at the same time, I've never minded ads, mainly because I understand what ad revenue can do. It gives you, it gives a lot of people a lot of things for free that they don't think about. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I get it in that aspect, but I'm also just exhausted hearing them all the time. Like, agreed. I, I don't I just like ignore them. Yeah, I mean, you have to, but it's annoying after a while. And I, I, I like and always, they, always being pressured to buy something. There's, there's a point where it actually has the opposite effect. Like, okay, do I really think Raycon earbuds are that good? They have spent millions in marketing and every single fucking podcast and YouTuber that I pay attention to, they're all like, ah, you gotta buy Raycons. And I know that Raycon's not putting their money in the tech or engineering side of those earbuds. It's all going to marketing. Do I want to buy that? Fuck no. I know exactly what goes into that. So there's a point where just the mere fact that you're throwing ads everywhere dilutes the value of your brand. I don't. But that's, 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 that's I will. Problem. I will never ever use JG Wentworth because in, in any situation <laughs> in which my money is somewhere and I need it now, I am not because of how annoying that stupid song is and that stupid yeah. commercial. I am never using their service. I'll be full honest. If I had a structured annuity, I would probably call them if I wanted out because it'd be the only thing I'd know to do. I would look. I don't I know would, if anyone else that does. I would it. type I into the else. search bar of Google. Whatever you, know you just who's whatever. Pop first. No. <laughs> what, what kind of service are they again? Would you say something annuity? Um, they, they 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 pay out annuities. All right. Well, I'm going to look at services that pay out annuities that aren't JG Wetworth into Google. Services that pay annuities.net. Pick the first one. JG Wetworth. But anyways, they pay everyone. moving on to the next topic. This podcast <laughs> yeah. is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. God Level up it. your character. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that one was awful. I saw <laughs> someone who does outdoors fishing shit. Do something <laughs> for them. Like, Fish are biting. Fishing. Whip out that phone and play some Raid Shadow Legends. Like, the, I watched uh, Pay Money Wubby do stuff with that. And he's straight up like, yeah, they're paying me really fucking well. That's why I'm going to do it. He's like, it's yeah, not bad. Like, so, with that, like, are you guys, would you be interested in a, like, in a mobile game in the first place? Probably not. But just by hearing that ad, you know what kind of game it is. You know it's going to be this grind fest, pay to win, ad laden piece of shit. That is like nothing like what you see in the commercials because they're hawking a bunch of money at trying to get people to play it. They did it well with pay money Wubby though. They had his deal wasn't to add necessarily. It was to actually play it live on stream. Yeah. And it actually didn't look that bad, but (laughs) it's just (laughs) weird when like pay money Wubby's one thing, like a hunting and fishing personality is like, why the fuck? Like, I get why they're doing it. You're giving them a fuck ton of money. <laughs> but just, his crowd is not going to do it. Yeah, you're just shotgunning out ads and hoping for the best. Like, at the very least, I do sh- the content, right? I sure like, hope these guys' hey, kids that- are watching this. <laughs> He's a hip outdoor guy. I'm sure people of his age. Then again, Eric, guess what demographic yeah. you're in. 
guys who like fishing and video games. Dude, I got, I'm in that demo. I can tell you how big that demo is. It's <laughs> fucking small. <laughs> but Polar either way. X, or, uh, uh, yeah, Polar X calling out uh, all those um, very salacious Kate Upton ads for the mobile games. Like, if I see an ad like that for a game, I know exactly why I'm not playing. You are using super cheap tactics to get 14-year-old boys to download your game. And guess what? There aren't boobies in the game, guys. It's just like a shitty Clash of Clans ripoff. Like, come on. And anyway, if you're downloading that game, you're on the internet. Like, if you want salacious content, it's it not exists. exactly hard yeah, to let's find. Let's not go further than that. But yeah, it yeah exists. We got... that's all we're saying. I, I don't want to be able. I don't want to have to toggle that thing on YouTube, Tom. Choose your next words wisely. It exists. Content um, does exist on the internet. Let's move after uh, or off this after this. So NBA 2K 20 and 21 use LeBron James as director of shoes. He put his own fucking shoes in the game. Scott called that out. So there you go. Um, so what we got next? Um, oh, Rocket League, they're doing some changes to ranked. Um, GC is no longer the top. Uh, there's going to be a new rank called Supersonic Legends. No, Legends. no, it's not. No, it's not. It's Supersonic, it is called Wide Champ. It's called Wide Champ. It's called Wide Champ. <laughs> okay, okay, so let's get for real, just real quick. So, I want to ask you guys if you saw this. Uh, Supersonic Legend. Really shitty name. Everyone knows it is. Everyone says it is. Um, they're adding three tiers of GC. blah de blah blah Okay. So, Rocket League put a tweet out today asking people to give feedback on the new name of Supersonic Legends. <laughs> they locked the tweet to only people tagged in it. No one was oh. tagged in it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That is so fucking stupid. It's that is funny. come on, Tionics, you know what that's, we want. That's dude. That that's is hilarious. Win, that's Wendy's Twitter account level tweet troll. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's good. Like that is a brilliant level troll from a company that doesn't use their Twitter account that way. Yeah, they, that's really not yeah. that common. Like at most, I maybe they'll tweet out a really cool play, but like this is troll level shit, and it was awesome. <laughs> but, Speaking of yeah, which, I really, I really don't like that name. But I think oh, the logo looks great. Awful. I like the logo. Yeah, looks good. I think so it. The, I think it looks better than the new GC rank logos. I liked purple. I yeah. don't like it as red. Yeah. So the but, community has centered around calling it anything except uh, what it is, um, and so the community has centered around calling it wide champ. So you get grand champ, and then you get wide champ, the thick neck champ. Yes. <laughs> fuck that champ. I like That's to a- view it as the crown of the egg people. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I've got I've got a, a legit question. Why the fuck are we doing another basically MMR based rank without a top five hundred and top one hundred thing? Yeah, like, I was surprised with that. Watch, it's got this like because there's there's a big difference between hey, I'm highly rated in this game. Like GC could mean anything it could mean you're an rlcs level player and it could just mean that yeah i play every weekend and i'm i'm really good like i've got a thousand hours game and and i'm i'm working on stuff real quick Uh, gotta say this before josh beats you to death don't confuse rank high level rank gameplay with pro gameplay oh no 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 not at all they are worlds apart but that's my point my point is that that's anything and wide champ isn't going to mean anything either no what i'm getting at is the top rank player in the world has nothing to do with RLCS. Like that kind yeah. of shit. Like yeah. don't assume that the highest rank in the world is RLCS player. All right. Like they're I mean, two different game types. In a the really skills that you way. need, the skills that you need to gain rank points and ranked is are different skills than you need to play well against yeah, the top teams, teams in the world. In RLCS. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But either way, well, actually, I, no, it's ruined. It's completely ruined. There's no way to make a rank system. <laughs> Just get but, rid of the rank. But, like, why do we have? But I'm surprised they like, didn't go the the top 500 or whatever route because the first season of Rocket League, the highest rank was platinum, and it was top 100. They've done it before. I'm surprised they didn't do it again. It just yeah. seems to make sense, and a lot of people are, are asking they, for it. 
are they afraid that people are going to be mad when like, oh, hey, I just cracked the top 500. And then like two weeks later, like, oh, no, I'm not the top 500. Yeah. You stole my rank, Psyonix. Like, I mean, all right. Well, I don't know. OK, think of it this way. Here's the other complication. It, the, that first season when they did that, you had to end in the rank to get the rewards. Yeah, it was but like now, what, whatever day the that the, the rank system got turned off for the update, whatever at that exact moment, that was what reward you got at the end of the, of the season. So how would you do that with the top 500 when it's a win-based thing? You, know, you only get... No, no. You, you better you hope nobody surpasses you during the time you aren't playing before the update yeah. hits. And guess what? Only but they don't have to get they don't have to get ten wins as top five hundred. No, uh, I don't know. The first season, no, it's literally no, no, whatever you're now. I'm saying now. If you go back to that, oh, because it doesn't uh, fit into no. the rest of the system is what I'm calling out. And I would like to see, you know, if you have put in the time to get to that top five hundred or top one hundred level area, sure, get the equivalent of you know alpha boost or white zombas like. Get an item that there's going to be 100 of each season or 500 of each season. That would be really cool to say, look, I was good enough at this point to get this item, which is super, super limited. Well, OK, to be fair, it is going to be super limited. Like, we don't know what this MMR point's going to be. This MMR point could be something that's even more restricted than top 500. That could be. I'd be surprised, though, if it was that exclusive. I, I mean, but, if, you go to, if you go 2,000. You're in that territory. Yeah. There's also something that uh, that I wanted to to bring up, um, and I've completely just forgotten it. <laughs> it was literally something about Rocket League and the rank system. Um, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so all these changes, and you know, we we hang out with a lot of high level Rocket League players. Uh, you know, people who are you know, just in beer leagues, people who are on the pro scene. And we hear about problems with this game all the fucking time. Like, oh, Psyonix did this, and this game is ruined, and we're looking forward to this update, but they're going to break something. I wanted to bring up the fact that if, if you are part of the 72-pin community, the stuff that you're hearing about Psyonix and their problems and the game being broken in whatever way it's and the issues with ranked don't matter for, like, 97% of the people who play this game. Yeah. We are the top 1% of players in Rocket League, right? The, higher the than that with some of these guys. Yeah, some of like these guys the, are higher than that, yeah. Most, most people are sitting at, like, the Diamond 2 level, right? That's where the majority of your player base is. And, frankly, they never run into the issues anymore. They never, mm -hmm. ever run into the issues we complain about all the time. So when Psyonix is optimizing for the 90%, I feel like it needs to be said that they're doing the right thing. They're building the right stuff for the majority of their players. You one percenters out there, yeah, you might be really good at the game, but frankly, you're a small fraction of this player base. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't matter all that much. Like, esports pros aside, mm -hmm. the grand champs who are not, you know, getting a bunch of numbers on Twitch or not in our LCS just don't really matter yeah and yeah. also rank rank itself doesn't matter that much and i and i really want to bring up that we're talking about this um i know a lot of people or some people at least have the misconception that them adding the ranks is going to fix like the matchmaking balance and stuff and fixing the ranking system adding new ranks literally does nothing for how the system match makes or or ranks players right the, your it's rank, putting a stamp your, on this number that already yeah, exists. Yeah. yeah. Your rank is a number, and that number is always calculated in matchmaking, not whatever symbol is, is that number represents. So them adding more ranks is simply a way to say, all right, so the 1,400 GCs or whatever like the, low end, the lowest end GCs are, um, instead of being like, oh, I'm GC, I'm, a, I'm 1,700 GC, you could say I'm gc3 or whatever the threshold is going to be yeah it's just a little it's to remove ambiguity uh not even that so much because i mean anybody at that level doesn't use oh i'm gc they just say oh i'm 1400 or i'm i'm, I'm in 1600 yeah. or i'm 1750 or whatever yeah but to a gold level player saying you're 1700 doesn't say anything true i guess that's a good point 
Like but, we only are familiar with that terminology because as Tom called the people yeah, around us. That's true. But, Especially because oh. your MMR isn't shown at, at lower ranks, but, but yeah, yeah, it's just a, it's a nice, I guess it's good in that way, but it's also just a nice thing to, to recognize the players that are at that level and say, Hey, there are enough players at this level that we feel appropriate to give them a shiny symbol that they can, you know, feel cool about or whatever. Ooh. And, and so, it, over a game's lifetime, rank inflation does happen. People get yeah. better at the game consistently, right? You mm -hmm. take a look at like the pro Rocket League players, let's say over the past five years. Five years ago, pro level play is indistinguishable. Um, or it, it's 100% it's a different game. Literally the opposite of indistinguishable. It's 100% a different game than pro level play today. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because people keep getting good. The, not only does the meta change, but just the mechanics. I mean, get the way, way better. The first esports uh, Rocket League championship looked like worse gameplay than we're playing right now on this podcast. <laughs> and like it was a little more. It was a little more organized, but mechanically, it was probably less advanced than most of the players playing this lobby right now. All. Yeah. And so, okay, I want to get on a concept Scott brought up before we move on real quick. Mm -hmm. And that is the idea that this something that could impact the lower ranked players by doing something you guys discussed. If you do a top 500 and you have to be in the top 500 at the end, that could help reduce Smurfs because rather than just stick around on an alt account, people would have to continue to grind theirs. It yeah. depends on how fast. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how... How much they have bubble to, players. to stay up there. I guess yeah. you'd have to play every day a lot, but you'd have to be playing every day. And if you're a guy trying to grind in, you're gonna have to play really hard. And so the only it would probably be like the top 700 people at least would be impacted. Mm -hmm. The only other, I guess, downside I could see for lower ranks, and it's not even a big deal, but having more ranks at the top that represent such a small percentage of the player base, player base, um, could make players in the i don't know gold level feel feel like they're worse than they are because this just the simply the amount of ranks above their rank uh like i'm trash i'm all the way down here. yeah exactly Look at all these yeah above me. yeah when in reality exactly. like you're actually you know somewhere within like the average rank yeah i guess i just thought of something but, else that could be a complication as well Let's say, let's say I'm playing and I get 400, right? I'm ranked 400, I'm in the top 500, but it's still based on your MMR and your win. Um, if I'm at 400, do I really want to play with that account, right? There's 100 more spots, and I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to make sure I'm not dropping, but mm -hmm. do I want to take the chance of losing, fucking up my MMR and not having that rank anymore? Right? See, it, it could mean that, that everybody in the top 500 no longer play because they're afraid of losing. Them. You see, now that's a different type of mentality. Someone that high of skill, I see them as the type of player that's going to keep playing to keep getting higher. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be more of the competitive type. If you're into that's trying to get top 500, you're not just going to be like, all right, I got to 500. Well, I'm it. good. Yep. <laughs> it's I want to be number two like in the top hundred i want to be in the top 50 i want to be the top five i want to be the best yeah it's that mentality but yeah, either way overall new ranking system new rank or not new ranking system new ranks are cool it's not going to affect matchmaking or the actual system it's the same matchmaking they're just giving some shiny symbols to people that have really high mmr values which is fine it's cool mm. I'm wide, champ. wide champ wide champ champ is the yeah, I just feel that if you're of that skill to be at that level, you're going to keep playing. Mm -hmm. If you're afraid to lose it, then you're thinking you're not at that level. Also worth mentioning, we're we're literally just talking about if they had a top 500 mechanic. Yes. This is yes. not actual. This, this they do not, not have one. one. They haven't said anything about it. But that would be really cool if that's what that rank's supposed to dictate. But we'll see. Either way, um, let's move on since we don't have very much more on that. Um, and that is, we had a Nintendo Direct, fellas. Yeah, we did. And it was a lot of fucking Mario. Holy shit, it was a lot of Mario. Um, so, 
first off, I'm just going to hit on something that I know of that wasn't in this. Uh, they're bringing Super Mario All-Stars to the SNES console on Switch. Yeah. It's a really fun pack of it's Mario on 1, 1, it's 2, on 3, right and Lost Levels, which is effectively really they the Mario 2. Pretty sure they have World in there, too. I don't think World was in All-Stars. Uh, they had an All-Stars with World. Now, I don't think this one that they brought has World. I think World's just in the emulator. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's there. But, oh, we got a hydrate request. Hydro homies. But, um, yeah, so that's coming. That's going to be kind of cool. Um, first one on our list is another All-Star game that's coming. Super Mario All-Stars 3D. And um, I am so fucking hyped. I am so fucking hyped for this. Oh, Dude, my God. Yeah, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario, or I keep saying Odyssey, Super Mario Galaxy. Yep. And not oh. Galaxy 2. Scott, hold on. Scott had never seen the, the announcement. He's saying he wished they put Galaxy, Galaxy 2 somewhere. Galaxy is in this. Yeah, Galaxy is in All Star or 3D All-Stars. So Galaxy is coming to Switch. So I am surprised they didn't put Galaxy 2 in it. I am mad at the gaming populace, and specifically all you motherfuckers on Reddit, go fuck yourselves. Everyone's like, what is it? What is it, Sunshine? When it's 60 FPS. Oh my god, couldn't they have made the graphics better for Mario 64? Like, everyone's complaining about this shit. Listen, they took a Nintendo 64 title, they took a GameCube title, and they took a Wii title, they smashed it all into one one fucking, you know, boxed copy, so you can play it on your portable Nintendo system anytime you want, and you're still fucking complaining? Go fuck yourselves. So Come on, there, guys. There is one valid complaint, and they're doing this as a limited release, which is complete fucking bullshit. That they're is a limited valid complaint. They're doing a limited physical release, which, okay, whatever. Physical media costs money if you don't sell it. I can yeah. kind of get behind that. Not really, but kind of. A limited digital release is complete bullshit and trying to hike your sales numbers. Absolutely a sales tactic to get everyone to buy it quick. Yeah, it's, it's shitty. Which I'm it's, not used to saying that kind of stuff about Nintendo. I normally say Nintendo about... Is, yeah, Nintendo has typically been really consumer focused, but uh, between the Pikmin 3 thing and this, who the fuck has taken over? Oh, oh, and I, I did bury the lead on something else. They are releasing a Game & Watch console that will play the original Mario. That is a fucking cool, nostalgic piece. Yeah. Not needed, but if you find one and you have some throwaway cash, that's probably pretty fucking cool. I might pick one up. That's really neat. I don't usually pick up physical stuff, but... It's a Game & Watch. Yeah, it's a Game & Watch. I'm, I'm going to pick this up. Let's be real. Um... And I'm really hyped about Mario 35, which is not yeah. a sequel to Mario 34, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> um, Mario, Mario Battle Royale, baby. Yep, it's like Tetris 99. There's 35 fucking people all playing the original Mario Brothers, and you're competing against everyone to, to be the best. Like no one ever was. So some of those clips they showed in Mario 35 look hectic as fuck, dude. I, I'm so into this. I am so into this. Oh, my God. And it's free for anyone who has a Nintendo account, so an online account. So um, October, I think, the beginning of October it launches. Yeah, Something I'm, like that. I'm pretty, pretty fucking excited for this. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. Um. Other really cool thing that I felt the lead got buried on because I think it's the most interesting thing that came out of this. They're doing a real life RC Mario Kart augmented reality on the Switch. What the fuck, Nintendo? <laughs> that is a fuck. That's a mouthful, but I promise you it makes sense. Go look up Mario Kart Circuit Live or whatever. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. Live circuit. It's a RC car you control with your Switch that has a camera built onto it. You set four, four little flags up in your room. It'll randomly generate a course between those flags 
And then you have to drive that RC car in real life through the flags. And it uses the camera to form an augmented reality Mario Kart into your house. Nintendo is is really interesting. They've played with augmented reality with the 3DS. And I never expected them to go back to it. This is a really cool way to go back to it. Yeah. So I don't know if I'll ever personally buy it, but I'm getting my hands on it to try it. Someone's going to get it and I'm going to try it because that's cool. And they showed it being multiplayer capable. So like if I have it and Tom has it, Tom come over, bring his, I'll play mine. And we'll have two physical cars running around the place. I'm just really hoping that the the remote control car isn't like a hundred bucks or something. Yeah, I could like, see the entire thing probably. being a hundred bucks, and then like additional cars being like thirty, forty. I can see it being something like that. Like yeah, it's, it's not going to be cheap. This no. is really cool, and so Irk Irk has got dogs. I I do not. We could go play hard mode, like hundred and fifty CC at Irk's place let the dogs out and then we have to dodge the dogs on the ar racetrack <laughs> super cool cannot wait yeah this is this is going to be really cool and i think it's going to be around that price point scott i think it will be around 100 bucks for a single car and it'll come with the game i really think that'll end up being the price point there was a lot that went into labs or labo that they were trying to recoup I really like Labo. I love the idea of Labo. The creative and make your own game suite was really cool in it. Um, I I do not fault Nintendo for selling flat packed cardboard for a hundred bucks. But anyway, um, that is the end of the Mario goodies. Yeah. Um, only thing I got to add to it is I've never played Sunshine, so I'm actually pretty excited about playing Sunshine. Sunshine honestly was a disappointment and it's only crime was coming out after Mario 64. Yeah. Cause like I was, I was primed and ready for Nintendo to like, just show fucking magic. And honestly, Mario Sunshine is a great fucking game. It just wasn't as revolutionary as Mario 64, which is kind of what soured me on it. I expected too much. It was good. It just wasn't Mario 64. So- Looking at it, it makes me think more of Odyssey than uh, 64. Like, it had the color. It was very bright, beautiful. It looked a little more open than what Mario 64 Uh, was. That's that's actually the downside of Sunshine. Whereas, like, Mario 64 had water level, snow level, like, a bunch of random shit. Sunshine was, hey, we hope you like tropical beaches, because guess what? Like, literally, that was the only level type in Sunshine was beautiful tropics well it is called sunshine it'd be yeah. like being called galaxy I mean, and being surprised that you're out in outer space it, a lot yeah i know but even galaxy had a bunch of different weird stuff sunshine was kind of locked into the same aesthetic design from its start simply because of where it was set which is kind of unfortunate because mario is at its best when there's a bunch of random shit that somehow fits together like uh, odyssey or 64 or even Galaxy, where the different planets, you know, felt different and had different gameplay associated with. Them. With Sunshine, it was mostly a bunch of the same stuff. Um, Scott's asking about Epic Mickey. I never played it. No, nope, I didn't either. Never played it. So it looked cool. It looked really fucking interesting for uh, Disney shit. But yeah, you struck out with us on that. But last bit of news. Sorry. Fall Guys partners with G2, Ninja, Mr. Beast, and Aim Lab to raise one million. I don't know what charity it went to. It went to Special Effect. Special Effect is a charity that is dedicated to helping all gamers with physical disabilities, uh, including like building, designing, and giving away specialized assistive and accessible controllers. Like they do a lot of great fucking work to make games playable by as many people as possible, regardless of your physical ableness. It's really fucking cool and honestly a fantastic charity to support with or without Fall Guys help. So uh, if you're looking for a gaming charity to support uh, both Special Effect and um, uh, fuck, why did I just forget their name? Uh, Extra Life uh, are two that I can personally recommend for helping out 
uh, sick kids and uh, kids with various disabilities. So if you're feeling if you're feeling generous, go throw your money. All right, that's what we got for news. And uh, to Dobby's point, yes, we have nothing on Battle of the Best. Battle of the Best was really interesting. I would like to see more stuff like that happen. They took a lot of big personalities and they put them off against each other in four different games. I think it was Halo, Fall Guys, uh, Overwatch, and Fortnite. I'm not sure exactly what the other two was. I only remember it was Call of Duty, Halo, Fall Guys, and something else, I think. Either way. It was kind of a cool thing. They put them all against each other. Uh, but yeah, that's all we got. Yeah. Um, any of you guys got any good stuff to get out on? Or are we good to just do the rundown? Oh, uh, stick Three, around. Four, After right. the rundown, we're going to run the top plays of the month again. So if you missed that the first time around, uh, we'll, we'll show that again on our way out. These top yeah. plays are brought to you by the very American Jif Extra Crunchy Peanut Butter. These top For plays. Hit them with, hit him with the mute. Your monster energy drinks. Okay. Brought so. to you by Reed's Craft Ginger Beer Extra. Made with real ginger. Brought also, by this podcast is pen. sponsored by Rage. <laughs> by <Challenge>. pen. <laughs> it's a pen. <laughs> it's it, a pen. You can it write with it. Stuff. You need to write stuff. All right. Anyway, um, for all you on Twitch, thanks for being with us. Um, if you missed our cast or you want to get some smaller segments or even maybe some different stuff, we have some quick news sec or shows on there. We're getting hopefully some other new content coming. Either way, head over to our YouTube. It's 72 Pin Connector, and you'll find all sorts of different stuff. If you're over there watching this entire podcast, thank you. But we're live every Saturday night. So jump into our Twitch twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern standard time jump in on the conversation get in the chat or snipe our lobby and play some rocket league with us if you're on neither of those you should at least follow us on actually that doesn't make sense you're watching this follow us on twitter we do updates we do all sorts of stuff there at 72 pc underscore official we have our plays of the day that go out every day um and then finally join the discord we're a hell of a community we play all sorts of games super friendly bunch of people if you're in some weird game shit, there's probably someone in here that does too. So below, you'll see some links. Join it. It's a pretty good crowd. And lastly, actually, that was a lot of shit I just threw at you. Let's make it simple. Go to 72pinconnector.com, find whatever the fuck you want there, and click it. I promise you it's all there. And soon, we'll be pretty. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to roll that beautiful clip footage. Let's roll the top 10 plays of the month. Game on, everyone. See ya.
freshness. Back to Luke. Ooh, just a little too high and now a dangerous 2 on one the other way. Wonder one, wonder two goals. 72 pin connector. Oh man, <laughs> this guy's got experience and ability. Wonder, oh, that was lovely. Getting underneath it. It was enough to just get the clear, but he stays 